house. The other we have that one hope. That's a strong marriage. The last one, and then I go into my tools. The last one means a significant marriage is a marriage that is raised to achieve for God. What gives your marriage significance is your ability to achieve, to do something for God. Your impact in the body of Christ. How you help each other to succeed in the matters of destiny. It is not about me, I'm making a mala. The destiny of my husband is making a way do and steal. So we gel. No. It is about our togetherness, our unity. Some people said I want the kind of marriage of Esther and Mayawa. Where the husband is a minister, the wife is a minister. You may not have it in that fashion. Even a minister said to me, when my wife sees you, you know, she, she, she sees you as a model, but I'm not pleased with my wife. She's not all over like you. She's supposed to be running the ministry with me. She will just be sitting with the children at home. And I say, hello, sir. She doesn't have to be with you every time. If that is not the planting of your marriage, she needs to take care of your children. That is ministry. And when you come back home, there is food on the table. She takes care of the house. Then when you have conversations, she brings wisdom for you. There are marriages like that. So don't under-evaluate your spouse because your spouse is not leaving your children. I said, are you kidding me? You think when I have enough children, I'm going to leave my children back at home and I'll be jumping around. I will minimize jumping around. It is wisdom. There has to be a structure for my parenting. And we have to do a new structure. All those people that will invite me for conference and they want to use my husband as Jara, they will say, we are inviting mama, but we know papa is coming. So papa will help us. say, mm, no way. That's wisdom. And some people invite my husband for conference. They will say, we know mama will come. I say, I'm not Jara. We are husband and wife doing ministry, but if you want to invite me, invite me. If you want to invite my husband, invite my husband. If you want to invite both of us, invite both of us. We went to one meeting. My husband drove me there. When he got to the place, you know, very simple man. My husband said, I'm going to sit. I said, you're not sitting anywhere. Drive back and be going. <laughs> Drive back and be going. When I'm done, I will call you. Come and pick me. Because we have to be wise. Ability to have togetherness and unity. Now, this is what I'm adding to it. I have to go that way because we realize in Ibadan, every year we have a new set of people. So I want you to know where we're coming from. So the next one, I'm going to be talking about the tools for building a sweet, strong, and significant marriage. The tools. I'm going to give you a number of the tools, and I only share around the ones I can within my allotted time. If you're being blessed, can you shout hallelujah? So now, there are tools. I call them tool kits for building a sweet, strong, and significant marriage. So write it down. Number one, oneness, not sameness. Oneness, not sameness. Number two, Wisdom for conflict resolution. Number three, building effective communication in relationship and marriage. Number four, managing seasons in marriage. Number five, living and cleaving. Number six, Sexual intimacy. Number seven, friendship. Tenderness. Affection. And empathy in marriage. Friendship, tenderness, affection, and empathy in marriage. Number eight, 
mutual respect and honor. Mutual respect and honor. Those are the eight things that were laid in my heart. And these are the eight things that are currently working in my marriage. So I'm going to just teach you around some of the, of the outlines. So let's go. What is number one? Number two? Number three? Number four, echo it. Number five? Number six? Number seven? Number eight? So let me take, I'll be taking the ones I, I can take. Let's talk about living and cleaving. Living and cleaving. That is Genesis 2.24. I deliberately, you know, did a study on the concept of living and cleaving. Because this is just March. I've been counseling since January 2nd, thereabouts. And honestly, this first quarter of 2024 has not really been an exciting one for me when it comes to counseling married people. It's been, it's been like heartache. It's a lot. I've had a lot in three months. A lot that I would even go back home and I'll be like, God, what is going on? Couples who do not have oneness. They don't have togetherness and unity. And now there is wisdom. Somebody said my mother-in-law would be bringing food for my husband. And I was very terrified. I was angry. But then I told myself, why will I be stressing me to cook? So if mommy is bringing food, let mommy become our caterer. I said, correct. Correct. So she stopped cooking. Every night, mommy was bringing food. She would have, she would have carried a spoon. As the husband is eating, she is eating. Then the mommy kept on bringing food. She would even give comments. Mommy, on just like, why you do you turn This one is sweeter than the one you brought yesterday. Mommy, the one you are bringing tomorrow, help us to spice it with pepper. Mm, cola tadie. <laughs> mommy was bringing the food until one day, Mama got tired. Mama stopped bringing the food. They even called Mama. Mommy, I'm going to jail. <laughs> Mommy, you didn't bring food. I said, such a wisdom. You will just be fighting and fighting. Don't you even want to watch Netflix? The time for cooking. Cooking is not easy. But she stopped. And that was when the marriage had peace. But ask me, I have the husband to blame. You are married, but you have not left. You are married, but you, are not, you have not left. And I also want to do this because of singles. Somebody asked on social media, said, if a man will marry you today, tell me three benefits he's going to have in your life. A lady said he's going to have peace of mind if he deserves it. <laughs> a lady said he's going to have honor and respect if he deserves it. He's going to enjoy the marriage if he deserves it. Three things. And then I told my husband, ah, we haven't seen anything. Ah, These are the people that are going to get married. So what am I saying? They do not understand what it means to live and to cleave. So let's run. How does living and cleaving work inside of marriage? I want singles to have a better understanding so that when you're preparing for marriage, you're going to do it from the place of knowledge. It means the act of leaving one's parents and forming a new bond with one's spouse. It includes prioritizing the needs of one's spouse above all other relationships. Come you. I said, Mom, I did not have sex in secondary school. I did not have sex on campus. I did not have sex when I was 31. And I'm cutting. I will not have sex. 
God said, ah, you should like Barak Kobe, Barak. <laughs> the devil has power, he does not have salvation. So all those calls, my friend came to the house and saw the connection. My friend walked me away and said, Esther, if you're going to enjoy your marriage, begin to cut the tears between you and your mom. I'm like, ah, what do you mean? Said your mom is doting on you terribly. If anything happens to you, she can die. Number two, if you marry, if she's not a good mother, she will not let you enjoy the marriage. She'll be coming and be coming. She'll be on your nose. Because she could barely live without you. That was the sense. I would go to church. They would have shared the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I would stay back. I need to do anything, I wouldn't tell her. I want to go to school tomorrow. She's asking me not to go. I should go the next day. I may even want to go the next day, oh, but the moment she raises that it's next day, I will go today. I started to cut it. I started to bring that order into my life. So many singles don't do this. We will cross the bridge when we get there. This is why somebody's daughter, somebody's son is under hell. Your family, they call the shots for you. Your parent tells you what to do, what not to do. You cannot do, you can't even sleep with your spouse, we tell mommy. All these attachments, the best time to begin to cause and to bring order is when you're single. What you will not accept, what will not do good to your spouse inside of marriage, you begin to chisel it when you're still not in relationship. This is why many married people are making adjustments and your families are not seeing your adjustments. Your families are attacking your spouse because the adjustment should have started way back. Your parents will call you, stop by in my house. I've already cooked for you. When you were bachelor or la lazy, free food, every time you go to work, you come back, you go and eat, you come back, and then mama say, ah, how can I suddenly pack all my pots? See, be coming once in a while, you see, be going. I intervened in a matter. The lady said, I'm so tired. Said, it's not only about the food. I can be eating the food too, but it's not about the food. We wanted to go and buy furniture for our new home. And my guy told mama, we are buying furniture. And mama said, no, you cannot tell very good furniture. I'm going to see you off to the place. Tell your fiance not to bother to come. And the brother too said, no, no problem. So the brother called the sister. Don't bother coming again. And lady said, wait, when we marry, who will live in the house? Is it mama's house? My house? My furniture? The guy said, don't worry, don't worry. You know, she's an elderly person, she can help us to decide. Why are you getting married? Oh, there are furniture, last son. <laughs> you cannot buy ordinary furniture, good furniture. So why are we passing the men for marriage? If we know we have done bad job in them, let them stay back at home. Living and cleaving. Let it start now. Your parents know your salary. You are giving them maybe half of it. It is good to take care of your parents. But you will come to a season. You will give it one day, not give it one time. Another time you will give double. It erodes that sense of responsibility that you must do. Because there are many marriages under the weight of, I want to give mommy, I want to give daddy. Everybody's suffering at home. Your first family now, if you're married, is your immediate family. Prioritize the relationship. Prioritize your partner, their needs. Establish a new family unit that is different from your parents' own if it is not worthy of emulation. This is the way my daddy used to talk to my mother. That's what I'm going to talk to you. This is the way my mommy used to do. That's what I'm going to know. Check it out. Is it worthy of being in, you know, introduced into my marriage? If it's not worthy, then one thing I will never imbibe. My mom said, I don't like family planning at all. That when I was married to your father, when, when he was alive, you know, when I'm, when I'm pregnant, no sex, come on, so that the child can stand very well. Okay. And when I have my children, I don't sleep with your father. I said, anyway, 
for, for how long? My mom said, for like a year. I said, what? My mom said, yes. I said, so, you will not sleep with my dad for one year. Okay. Because you are breastfeeding us. And you were complaining my daddy had a girlfriend. I'm not justifying him, more, but, you know. <laughs> and then my mom said, ah, oh, it is very good for the child. You know, when you're breastfeeding your baby and you're not already having sex, the baby will be feeding on good milk. <laughs> if you are having sex and you're breastfeeding your baby, the baby will be drinking this palm from the breast. Money Mogweo. Mogweo. I said, I have died. <laughs> what? I was a teenager, but I knew that, yay! Have a healthy balance, setting boundaries. Have healthy balance, setting boundaries. Healthy balance, setting boundaries. I had a misunderstanding with my then boyfriend. And then I carried the matter to the house. If I stay only on this one, every other thing will do it online. And I carried the matter to my mom and I said, my mom, you know, he did this to me. He cheated on me. He was seeing another girl. My mom said, ah. That guy is a very bad guy. I said, yes. My mom said, ah, sorry. Bele. And she, you know, pet me, pacified me. And I went back to school. And I went to meet the, the boyfriend. And he came to me and he apologized. Explaining to me why he did what he did. He wasn't right. He was wrong. I should please forgive him. And then everything was coming into my heart. And then I said, I forgive you. So I expected everything to continue to go on with my family. Then I go back home and I told my mom, ah, mom, I'll be going to see my partner's family. Mom said, which family? I said, yes, now. My mom said, ah, why will you go and be seeing his family? Is it not the one that did something to you that did that day? I said, ah, ah, we've already said to. My mom said, what is said to? How can he say to? What did you say to it? That guy is not a good guy. He didn't treat you well. I sat down. Then I thought about it. The information I brought in earlier has destroyed his image. We have reconciled. There's another fight on ground now. How do we now reconcile my mom and the guy? This is what some couples do in marriage. You are having any shikini disagreements. My mommy, my daddy, even from courtship. Somebody said, it was because when we were having misunderstanding, my mommy was hearing my sound. And she said my sound was not really, you know, your sound was not sounding. <laughs> Say my mom, you know, my mom saw me and said, what is going on with you? You're not excited. What's going on? That was when I now told her. I said, you don't have control. Now you have settled the fight. Your mother said you're not Maria. Which fight? One chicken matter. Small matter like that. Healthy boundaries. Structures. Our structures in place. But someone, please let me finish this. I beg you. Now let me say this. Families and parents who are neck deep in the marriage life of their children, they have done a very bad job in raising them. If they have done a very good job, they are supposed to be like mother eagles who take their eagles to the mountaintop, drop them and see, check out what you have done. They cannot be actively alive in your marriage. Cleaving and living helps couples to have intimacy, independence, trust, self-sufficiency, personal growth, and development. It makes you to bring into action how you have been nurtured over the years to raise a family. It gives you a sense of decision-making, how you want to do your thing. We knew we are going to leave Lagos for Shagam since we were courting. How do I go tell my mom in the early stage of our courtship that this man that you're thinking is your answer prayer? It was not really about my mom, actually. It was about people. 
Somebody called my mom and said, see, you're a widow. Your husband died when your children were very young. This one that Esther is engaged. Hope the guy has money. Hope he can take care of your family. And my mom called me and said, can you imagine what this man said to me? He was asking me if your husband is very rich so that he can take care of me because I've suffered over you. And I said, you are my responsibility. My husband will not take you as responsibility. Flatly. I'm not getting married because I need a man to come pay you for all your investment in me and my siblings. No. A minimal journey. Even this I hold you, I hold you. It has sense. Yes. It has sense. My family first. I cannot leave my family and not be saying, no, that is my... No. Who we'll balance it? There's a wisdom. And so my mom told me and I said, why didn't you tell her the situation of things? My mom said, ah. She told him oh, that my husband is a pastor. I said, oh, she? <laughs> my mom said, ah, I told him that a I said, me to be go. <laughs> Very big holy. <laughs> My time is up. We have big holy. And the holy is 10 years old. <laughs> so she believes strongly in the vision. The way I presented him to her is the same way she's receiving him. The way I presented him to my family members is the same way they are receiving him. The same way he presented me to his people is the same way they are receiving me. And I said in Yoruba, You cannot label a price on your goods and you expect people to pay beyond what you've rated it to be. You buy honor for your spouse before your relatives. You buy honor for your partner before your relatives, before you even get married at all. This is how it works. Let's run this one. Family traditions or rituals that are not welcomed by your spouse must be done away with. Family traditions, rituals. You cannot transport everything in your parents' mar marriage and come dump it in your own. There must be a togetherness and unity. This is the way we do it in our own family. This is the way you do it in your own family. We are now in confusion. No. What do you want? What do I want? Then we see how we can compromise and we establish that structure in our marriage. No confusion. Because this is a distinct family unit. Not an extension of the marriage of your parents. Family traditions or rituals not welcome. A very sad one. This woman got pregnant. She was not able to deliver. She was in labor. And she says, this is not just contractions. There is a spiritual undertone on this matter. And then she called the husband. Is there something you are not telling me? And the husband said, truthfully, there is something. In my family, a pregnant woman will never deliver. Until we rub palm oil on her belly. He started to tell her all the things he should have told her when they were cutting. So that is the way it works. So we're going to deliver peacefully. We better call our family members now. And they're going to do the ritual. They will lay you down at the shrine. They will pour oil on your belly. They will rub it. And you will deliver. I don't know how it happened. Possibly because of the pain. Possibly because there was no time to negotiate her faith. I don't know what that is. She gave in. They rub her oil on the belly. She delivered. And after the baby came, she said, let's not settle this matter. My next pregnancy, you're not carrying me to shrine. You're not pouring oil on my belly. These are the reasons why we have courtship relationship. This is the reason why we do courtship. We talk. I told my husband, I'm from a family known for masquerade. My great-grandfather to my grandfather, they were great. If you go to Iwo and you mention Akinshola, they, they, possibly they can run away from Kisha. <laughs> he was so fierce. My grandfather was very fierce with chaps. I never set my eyes on him. I only saw him once in my life. I saw him when I was 10, when we went to bury my father in the village. That was the last time till he died. He didn't ask of me. He didn't ask to see me. There was no connection. And I didn't want any connection either. 
masquerade, charms, all those stuffs. We talked about it, and I said, see, I've been born again since I was 10. There is no good delay, Baba, good delay you on my case. I've been standing on the victory provided in the word of God. I'm a new person. I carry anointing. I carry grace. Every matter has been settled in the word. It is not today I will not start fighting it. Since I was in school, I've been fighting it, standing on the redemption power. You have to talk about where you're coming from, your family and everything. Let your partner know what they want to fight in prayers. Let them know what they cannot deal with. That is the way it works. You cannot transport what is not into your own marriage. This is why many marriages are not sweet, they are not strong, they are not significant. Last one. Relationally, your marriage requires new priorities. So you can also live relationally. Relationally. We understand the economy of this nation, but that is not enough reason for you to say you're going to live in your family house. Go and rent one-room apartment. Start your own family there. Because we are humans. I can be looking like, like, like a model to you. If you live in my house, after one week of work, we will fight. Let me tell you the likely areas we're going to fight. Number one, you finish eating, you wash your plate in my house. No matter how tired, you wash it. I can be that. I don't want to see death on my sink. My sitting room, I don't want to wear slippers. I want to walk barefooted. Meaning the this, this sitting room must be swept well. You drink beer water, freshness, pee, poo. You put sachets on the window. Yay! A number of things. The more we begin to be together, the more we see our flaws. And the adjustments we need to make. And the things you don't even like in the other person. So leave family house. Go get your own place and take your spouse there. A relationship ended. The lady said since, since the beginning of the relationship, he was saying it. I'm not leaving my mother's and my father's house. I'm going to marry in their house. So the lady said, in one room, said yes. That the money is supposed to use for accommodation. He was going to use it to build house. The lady said, how much does it cost to build a house? How much is your income? How many years will it take to build the house? And they brought the matter to me. And I said, brother, you know what? I understand. Go get an apartment. Be living there. God will provide the money for you to build your own house. Meanwhile, the land was bought by his mother. And he has siblings. And he wanted to build on that same house as his own house. So I told him, brother, it cannot work. But somehow... They got married, got married in that same family house. And in that same family house, everything burst. They've divorced. Last one, financial, I've said last one before, sorry. Financially, financially, I know of a couple, the lady came from a very wealthy family, living and cleaving. She wanted a soft life. But the guy cannot have. So she considered like, okay, when we are married, I will still be going to seek help from my mom and my dad. And do you know the meaning of that? It, it derogates honor on your spouse. So she would be going to her family house. She would go to take things. Her mother would be like, you have come. What is it that you don't have at home? You know, mothers, she could have been doing that from a pure heart. So she was doing it. Taking food stuff, taking stuff. And one day the husband said, I'm not going to eat of this thing. You are living, you are cleaving with me. If it is gari we have, both of us will drink it. If it is only fun, no AC like your parent house, you're going to stay here. And they started the wala. And lady was not feeling like she was suffering. Maybe I jemmy. No. Part of living is to start your own family. Your parents did not start it in that way. They started somewhere. You to build something and it will grow. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Financial. Leave dependence on our parents, on relationships, on anything at all that can actually affect our marriage. Even friendship. Living. I'm extending it in your understanding. Even friendship. 
A lady said to me, said, my, my guy is born again. The only problem in his life is his association. These are the guys that every Saturday, they go to Kubana. If you don't know what Kubana is, <laughs> you don't know what Kubana is, even if you're not going there, you don't know Kubana. Where they go to drink shisha, they smoke, drink alcohol. It doesn't pay. Free. It will drink to stupor. And born again. And the lady says, see, I know you're not strong a believer, but these are your friends. They have to go. Leave your friends. Let's build this relationship. And I said, sister, there's a question too. How did the Holy Spirit of God tell you that he's your husband? And the Holy Spirit knows his profile, that is, he drinks, he womanizes, he has bad gang. And the Holy Spirit, we need to check something. But thank God the relationship ended. Friendship has to also go. Any friendship that does not work for your marriage, we go. Anyone. And I will say, if you like me, you don't like my husband. Even me, I do not like you. You like my husband? You don't want to see my face? I will show you my face. You want me, you must want him. You want him, you must want me. If you don't want both of us, you don't have any of us. Friendship can also go. There are sacrifices like that that we have to do. A time when your wife is in the clinic and your friend is calling you to come somewhere, you say, no, I can't. My wife needs me. My husband needs me. Somebody called me on the phone. We're having a conversation. That was in 2015. And we're just talking. A friend, he knows the person. We we're talking. And my husband started calling me. So I was thinking, like, okay, no problem. When I'm done with this conversation, I'm going to call my husband. So when the call ended, I called my husband. And my husband said, what was that? I said, it was so-so-so a person, our friend. My husband said, I've called you five times. And each time, it was engaging. So why can't you tell the person? I'd like to call you back. My husband is calling me. I said, wow, what did it make sense? <laughs> I said, well, that's true. I said, I'm so sorry. I wasn't thinking like that. I was just thinking like, okay, when I'm done, I'm going to talk to you because I know I only just long talk. And later, I reasoned it. If my husband is calling me when I'm having conversation with someone on the phone, my safety is to even say, hello, I would like to call you back. My husband is calling me right now. It is something. It is safety. You cannot say I trust myself. Me, never. Oh, emotional relationship can build anyhow, anytime. This is the reason why many marriages are hitting the rock. Just little door that they left opened. And that was when I got the sense. Leaving and cleaving. Cleaving means I'm coming together in agreement with you. We are building the kind of marriage that we want. So for the singles, your living and cleaving starts now. It's not a matter of disrespect. I was having an event for 30 plus singles. And the person called me and said, Mama, I want to come for your meeting. The meeting was for 30, 40 people, years old people. And the person said, I want to come for the meeting. And I said, okay, you can come. The person said, I need you to talk to my parents. I said, you said? I should talk to your parents who want to attend events. What did you say your age is? <laughs> you're 35 or you're 30 something. I said, even teenagers. <laughs> Even teenagers, they have a life of their own. Mommy will say, pass here. They say, Mommy, I understand. I agree with you. I will pass. They say, pass here. Say, Mommy, I cannot pass here because of this. Even you say, hey, we you, yeah, baby. Meaning you also have sense. I said, I, my husband said, Esther, don't stress it. Call the family. She's the one that you need. I said, yes. I said, call the family. I said, call the family. I said, okay, your daughter wants to come for my event. That blah, blah, blah. I said, yes, yes, yes. So where's the event? I told them. When is the program? I told them. When will it end? I told them. When I was done, I said, ah! <laughs> After the meeting, 
I told my husband, I want to see the best scene. There's an apron string you need to cut. Apron string. It also what you want, but you need to cut it. You should be able to say, Mommy, I'm going for an event. Where? In redemption camp. And you will go. You are an adult. And you're going to be married. You're going to raise children. Under this, Master said, Man, Roshan, we'll leave it. <laughs> and I left the matter. But the way I talked about it in the meeting, I'm so sure that sister, she has broken that edge. Because I talked. What am I saying? Stand up. The life you want to live ahead of you, if it's going to be sweet, it's going to be strong, it's going to give you peace, it's going to be the kind of marriage God wants you to build. Your building starts right now. You are a single. Learn how to make good decisions for your life. The reason why some parents don't have peace of mind is because you don't always make sensible decisions. You don't want them to treat you as babies. Act like an adult. Make sound decisions. Give sound counsel to your parents. Let them see your growth. Let them see your maturity. Let them see your sense of responsibility. That is the way it was. So that one sister will not suffer. So that one brother will not suffer. Stand up on your feet. This is what living and cleaving is all about. You leave everything. And you give priority to your new family. And I said to every married couple in this place, give priority to the needs of your spouse. My husband is a very good man. And I'm already saying I married him by mercy of God. My husband will say to me, my family is the first. And the family is me and you. I am the one who always go out of myself to do something. My husband will say, no. If I have 500, it's for me and you first. Every other person, after we, we are okay. Commitment. He would say, I'm buying food for the house. We are eating. There was a time I was calling him food husband. My husband would say, even if I don't, if I can't do this thing at this time, there must be food in my house. It is always food. I would say food husband. Food, food. There must be food in the house. He will do everything within his power to get it done. Commitment. And if our spouses are going out of their ways to make things easy for us, let us make life easy for God's sons and God's daughters. Can you bow down your heads? That Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me to live all and to cleave to my spouse. Help me. Living and cleaving doesn't mean it's your parents, abandon your parents. They kidnap you, you call it marriage. No, that is not it. It is boundaries. Creating boundaries. Setting your spouse as your major priority. Giving attention to the matters that are for your family, immediate family unit. Letting go of the things that your spouse do not want in your new marriage you're creating. Can you just pray? That Lord, you're helping me. Maybe you're a single. And God is saying, you need to start to cut the apron strings. I cannot do without seeing my mother in a day. That was me. Do I still love my mom? I will always love my mom. She's the reason I want to be rich. So I can take care of her. But my vision has gone past that. I also want to raise my children. I want to nurture my spouse. I don't have to jump in there every time. I'm building my own home. Building my own marriage. Nurturing my spouse. Pray. Lord, we receive wisdom. Wisdom to build correct marriage. Wisdom to build strong home. Maybe you were in a relationship before. You have learned your lesson. That God is turning the end of time to your own God o'clock again. Yes. Can we be on our feet? Can we pray in tongues? Yes. Yes. That God is giving you a turn around. Can you pray in tongues? Can you pray, pray, pray for yourself? God is giving you a turn around. 
a turn around. You have made your mistakes. You have done the things you weren't meant to do. But you're starting all over again. You look at your past relationship. You discover the things you didn't do well. And you're making structure not to repeat mistakes. God is turning the clock to your own God o'clock. Can you pray in this as I want to hear you pray in a prayer? Aranda mani kane ko subradia baba baba shate and lega de bako subreda gibarato shataya. Living and cleaving is for husband and wife, not only for one person. Living and cleaving, my family comes first. My marriage is my priority. I build my home. I'm committed to you, my spouse. I'm committed to my family. I'm committed to my children. Some married women, they use school fees to buy our and bear clothes. It is a misunder priority. Your children first. Can you pray in this room? Pray for yourself. Pray. Receive wisdom for making decisions. Wisdom for making decisions. Wisdom to stand on your feet. In Jesus' mighty name, was he praying? One of the other topics I was not able to take was marriage and seasons. I think it was Gary Chapman who wrote a book, right? Four seasons in marriage. Let me just run down and we pray that there's a season where there is so much discouragement. Things are not working. You are pressed. It could be for any matter. I think that should be the fall, the fall season, where it seems like you're losing it. You're having a sense of disconnection with your spouse. The romance is not just forthcoming. The house is just quiet. Routines. I may not be able to give you accordingly because my note has been taken. There is springtime, there is summer, there is winter, there is the fall. But I know those seasons. Season, discouragement, hopelessness, chaos. Another season, love, blossomness. Everything is going well. Sex is regular. You're excited about life, about your spouse. Another season comes, it's like, what's going on here? Or just there. I don't know the season you're in as a married person. For the singles, your prayer is this. The wisdom Gary Chapman shared, he said, in your season of rain, it is a very good season for married couples where there is no critical issues. You're just fine. You wake up, you cook, you dance, you watch a movie, you go out, everything is good. He said, that is the season of peace. And that is the season you prepare for war. How? He said that is the season you work on yourselves. That is the season you fine tune your communication. That is the season you trash your issues. That is the season you build spiritual power together. That is the season for prayers. That is the season for Bible study. Attend events. Go out. Because another season will come. It will be like the thing is shaking both of you. You, are, you don't have stamina. There is no marriage that has not gone through this or will not go through it. A season whereby both of you are like, God, the water is almost covering us. Jesus, the water is almost covering both of us. But you are still holding each other. You can never drown. God is your anchor. You can never get drowned. The married people that are here, hold your spouse, that's my final assignment. You know the season you're in. Possibly a season where there is no job. It's looking like the fall season. No job. 
Money is not forthcoming. The wife, you go to market these days. You go with 50,000. You come back with politin bank. And then you enter. Just man said, ah, 50,000 is not. Is there a coton? <laughs> Actually, your problem is not your husband. It is Tinubu. But somebody, they are already fighting. Already fighting. You use the fuel in my car. And now, you, you, your car, there's no fuel in your own car. And I will take the children to school. That was a couple. And I said, listen, you need fuel, Abby. Don't scatter your marriage because of fuel. He said, no, you use the fuel in my car. So, you don't have fuel. 650. Chill. That is the fall. Things are not so enough. The pressure is much. Let it out in this meeting. That's the moment you're praying now. I'm handing over to Pastor Mayowa. You're praying now. This season in my marriage, Lord, I feel so tense. It's like the connection is loose. It's like we're losing each other. Lord, come and reunite us. This is the season where you don't even have any issue. Then pray, Lord, solidify our affection and our love. Give us stamina for life, fortitude for living. And grace us, establish our feet. You're a single, you're going to pray that, Lord, even me, I'm going through seasons. Whatever season I'm in now, I receive grace from your spirit. I receive wisdom to navigate my season. I receive power to stand through. You are a waiting single. I've been waiting. It's like nobody's seeing me. I've been waiting. It's only married men that are coming. I've been waiting. They are turning me down. I've been waiting. Nobody is coming. Pray. Lord, I receive wisdom to navigate my season. You are a waiting couple. It is another season. You need grace. You need the energy of the spirit to stand. You need the power to hold on to your faith and your convictions. Pray. We will not fail God in this season. Every season my marriage will go through. We stand on top of it. Can you pray? Season. Where you don't seem to understand each other. Season. There is no bustling and bustling your house. Pray. Lord. Hey. Thank you. You are praying. I receive grace. Bustling and bustling my home. Excite my home again. Excite my marriage. We will not be tired of each other. We will not be tired. Somebody is praying. Somebody is here. You left your spouse hanging. Pray, Lord, reunite us. Reunite us. Married people pray. This is not how we started. We used to love each other. We used to honor. We used to revere. We used to care. We used to be tender. We used to listen. We used to serve each other. Bring us back. Your marriage is about collapsing. Pray. Lord, rebuild our walls. Rebuild our walls. Rebuild our walls. Rebuild our marriage. You are about to divorce. And God is saying, hand it over to me. I will do a new thing. Lift it up to Jesus. Rebuild my walls. Single spray. My marital destiny. Be rebuilt. Be rebuilt. You have histories of breakup. You have history of disappointment. You have histories of not being loved. You have history. It is like you're not existing. Nobody's seeing you. Can you pray? Change my season. Change my season. Change my season. In the name of Jesus, you have gone through loss. You have gone through loss. You want to come back to being normal. Receive double for your loss. Receive double for your loss. Rabba Catelia de Bababasha. Ere de Bocosu Brecati Baratos. 
said, I haven't read so much about marriage. Mama, marriage is work. A single lady. She said, marriage is work. I said, it is true. The Bible says in Matthew 19, 11, message version, it says marriage requires a certain level of attitude and grace. That does not mean you will fear marriage. You will not be married. But that is a call for you to put in the work. It requires a certain level of aptitude and grace. As you are counting the anniversary for our ministry, you are also counting anniversary for our wedding. Because it was when we got married that God birthed professionals. And in the 10 years, we have gone through all kinds of seasons. We have gone through the season of sickness. We have gone through the season where I was in the hospital and I went to do a procedure and when I was done, I fainted. And by the time they would revive me, I saw my husband bowing down on his knees, holding me, shaking me and was saying, Esther, there was no tension. There was no panic. He was just at rest. We're just saying, Hester, Hester. I opened my eyes. I looked at my husband and I started shedding tears. I said, What? And then he dragged me up, pulled me to himself. When we left the hospital, we got back home. My husband said, This is to remind you that you're having a WhatsApp conference for this evening. I said, See, <laughs> I don't want to do anything. I just want to be alone. He said, no. We did not have generator. We were charging our phones at a barber's shop. He packed my phone. He went to stay in the barber's shop for two hours. Charged my phones. That was after he gave me food. I used my drugs. And he came back with the phone and he said, go and sleep now. Where's your message? I was like, he said, you're doing this conference today. I did the conference. You know that kind of WhatsApp conference? You now enter the conference. The convener now said, Mama, be doing the class. They will read later. I said, ah. I said, it was my award that caused this. But I was not allowed to sink in. I did the class with the whole of my heart. Nobody knew anything. Was it the season where we started this ministry and we had to resign our jobs? And we were home. We did not even have money to go to school outreach. We wanted to go to a school. Kosovo <laughs> Both of us now said, you know what? There's no money for school outreach. My husband said, we'll stay at home. We'll be praying and be praying for the students. <laughs> so we're told we're praying for the students. Really, we're praying for the students. And we're enjoying ourselves. And then our pastor called us and said, ah, guys, what's going on? I said, there's no transport, though. Pastor said... What happened to your legs? You cannot trek to school. Most of us said, that is true. We have legs. <laughs> we said, tomorrow we are going to trek to schools and do outreach. Pastor said, if you allow money to be an obstacle to your vision, the devil will not let resources flow to you. 
He knows the way to shut you is to keep resources away from you. But when he says you are doing, you are going, nothing is stopping you. My husband said, tomorrow we are going to trek to the school outreach. And that evening, somebody called us on Facebook. I said, I see you guys, you're doing so well. Can I have your account details? We looked at each other. I said, who she share? And the season, the last one before you pray. You know, somebody said, if I wear 50,000 shoes and you put your nose, that's a big cost you. Say, when I was wearing slippers and I was tying it with rubber bands, where were you? That kind of feeling. So we are told. And we were talking and we were just, we were laughing. And this man was laughing. <laughs> and he laughed. And as he, like I was also falling down there. As he raised his leg and laughed, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the trousers just tore. And I looked at him. I wanted to laugh. I wanted to cry. <laughs> and I was like, oh, why did you laugh now? He now looked at me. wanted to say, she people were just laughing. And he looked at me. We looked at each other. We were just laughing. And after we laughed, I just looked at him like, oh, this is, this is just the best trousers that this man has. After these trousers, the other trousers is not good. This is the trousers he uses for school outreach. I just went to the bedroom. I wanted to laugh. I wanted to cry. Cry surpassed the laughter. And I started to cry. I said, Father, my husband only has two trousers. Who did he fire? <laughs> I'm going to go to school outreach tomorrow. That season, that is the season where many couples are losing each other. Lord will give it to you. My husband will say, when there is no money, that is when we are so close with his grace. When something is hot, it is amazing. That is the moment we are so close. Actually, when there is petty, petty misunderstanding, is when we have overfed. You know, when there is nothing to do again, you're just having petty, petty disagreements. What am I saying? That in all the seasons, we are strong. We are united. Nothing is shaking us. Nothing is coming in between us. We do not give room to the devil. Spouses, hold your spouse. Hold yourselves. Look into each other's eyes. Sing, pray. Lord, give me wisdom for my seasons. Help me know what you are doing now. Help me stand. There is no job. But they are asking you to come and sleep with them. What will you do? Single brothers are not proposing. Only married men. Shall I be managing this one first? Pray. I will not lose it in my season. I will not lose it in my season. I will not lose it. I will not misbehave. I will not lose my husband. I'm seeing spouses. If you are angry, let it go now. You are angry with your spouse. Let it go now. Do not give room to the enemy. This is your moment to rebuild. We rebuild affection. We rebuild love. Sex. Intimacy. We rebuild trust. We rebuild trust. We rebuild commitment. We rebuild affection. We rebuild affection. We rebuild grace. We rebuild our wars. Rada Baba Kosha Telia Daba. Ete Korea Telia Daba Baba. Ira de Bakosa Telia Daba. Money is not even strong enough to separate us. Money is not strong enough to separate us. Lack of it, abundance of it is not strong enough to separate us. We will manage each other with wisdom and understanding. And we have mercy for my spouse. My spouse, we have mercy for me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. I pray for the singles. God give you grace. God give you grace. Grace for your journey. You will not fail God. You will not fall. You will not fall into error. You will not miss God in your season. You will not miss God in this season. You will not miss your consecration. You will not lose heaven. Can you pray? Can you pray? This is your moment to pray now. One of the things you came to do here is to pray. One of the things you came here to do is to pray. Zaga bataka sege para katai gadasa. Raga de boko siga paria katada gada. Yege de bo siga paria katadi gedosha. Zabele kos kapadia kataya. Lord help us to build our home right. Help me as a single man, help me as a single lady. There is a critical need for my own in the agenda of God. There is a critical need for my own for my marriage in the agenda of God. There is a critical need. It is critical. It is critical. Radaba Shida Bakataya. There is a prophecy for our marriage. We cannot afford to fail God. There is a prophecy for our Masiga para katada baroko saba. Yesi le preke do shate baragata ya dawa. There's prophecy over me. I cannot feel this one. I cannot feel my God. We must fulfill his cause. There is prophecy over us. We cannot feel this one. We cannot fail our God. We must fulfill His call. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are still praying. The children of Israel were crying to God, crying to God and say, God, intervene in this land. Save us from this oppression. And when God was going to answer that prayer, He came to a young man to go and propose to a lady. They were coming together. They did not know that they were com they, they are coming together was going to bring a solution to a generation. They thought they were just getting married. Brother, you don't know what is on your life. Moses is going to come from that family and is going to turn things around for the generation. We cannot allow petty things to destroy the more important things that God wants to do through our families. When God set up the institution of marriage, it's not for joke. It's because God wants to bring something out for it. To the glory of God, I, we and the team members of Treasure House, we've gone to over 1,200 secondary schools, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. You don't know people that have been killed 
just because they may have been killed, but they, they were not killed just because we entered into that school. You don't know what as lives have been preserved. Marriages have been set. We are going to show you a video. Just yesterday, one teenager, one teenager in Federal Government College, Akure, posted on my, on my wife's comments and said, I saw both of you only once and I made a resolve. I'm going to get my marriage right. Just because you step into the, I remember that day. We were in that school till around 8.30. Counseling all those children. You cannot do your marital life anyhow. You cannot do it anyhow. When you are making that choice, when you are building it, because as she was talking, what I was seeing was that there were some people that were saying, eh, whatever it is. It is not joke, sir. What is upon your marital life is more than we get married, we wear fine clothes. God wants to get something out of that marital life. When they are telling you as a single, get it right. It looks like it's because they want ministry. They want to wear fine clothes and have fine pictures. I will not be in your marriage for you. Nobody will be there. But one thing that you will never see is that you will know, you will hear, you will remember that there was a time someone spoke to you to take your life serious, but you never responded to it. You will get to 70 years. You will look back at the number of years two things will happen. Is it that you say, thank God for how far we have come? Or you say, I wish I had listened earlier. God has conveyed us here. You are 17 years old. You are 21. You are still in the university. You are hearing all those things. What are the decisions you are going to make? What are the decisions that you are going to make? The body that God gave us for this year's SMTO, in particular me, was that Jesus is going to Galilee and he must pass through Samaria. He must pass through Samaria because a young woman is there that is going to come to the well and when he gets to that well, so many things have happened to that woman. You might be here today. So many things have happened in your life. Or you have been waiting on God's promises. And it looks like, it looks like this thing is not working anymore. Or there has been a mess. And you are looking at, how do we come out of this thing? All kinds of things. Marriages that are on the verge. The only thing still keeping them is because they are Christians. They don't have a marriage anymore. Whatsoever level that you are, don't take this time as we are just wearing fine clothes, we are looking good, we are doing anniversary. Please take it to talk to God. Nobody will be there. Nobody. My, my parents had four children, one has got to be with Jesus. All of us are married, they are alone now in Elisha or states. They have a house to themselves. We are not there, we are not there. But look at all those people that God has raised. Just because a husband and a wife came together. My marriage will make sense. I will not fail God. I will not fail God. Can you open your mouth and pray? Open your mouth and pray. If your spouse is here, go and grab your spouse. If they are not here, pray. I will give you all that it takes. Everything that it takes. A shoni jere lori aye bi. A shoni jere lori delay me. God will take all the profits concerning my own marital life. Concerning my own marital life, Lord, you are going to help me. Lord, you are going to help me. If the world is messing up, I will not mess up. I will do it right. Rakata, can you pray? I know we are out of time, but this is where we came. This is where we came. Even if your marriage is well now, can you pray for your marriage for the future? Can you speak to the future? By the grace of God, the prophecy of God over our marriage. Over my marital life. 
You are a single, pray, pray, pray. You are a teenager, pray. Arakataga body kasotaya. Can you pray? Hey, I am kabara shika time. Zekero boko shika paya. Rateke dobo shata. Some of you within one year you are getting married. Some of you within five years you are getting married. Some of you in months, in weeks. Some of you are already married. This marriage will work. Be a shufa. Be a shuko. Be a shufa. Be a shuko. Rakasiga para kataya. Yes, shadedebo sakata. Our marriage has significance. We are not like the world. I cannot fail you, God. I must not fail my God. I must fulfill His cause. Hey, Shakataba. Our marriage will not end in divorce. Because there's something bigger than us. There's something bigger than us. There's something bigger than us. If we are long for you, you will see, Moshe. The plan of God for our life. Can you pray? Can you pray? You didn't come here to look at anybody. Can you pray? If you are a single, on the hand of a brother or a sister, on the hand of someone close to you, and say we will fulfill our clause. There is prophecy over me. I cannot fail this cause. I cannot fail my Lord. Who is that woman at the well? Who is that woman at the well? Who is that woman at the well? Ragerobo shatele gada bada kata, zake pakata ne, eh shakata bada gada ba. Reteke to, we invoke the blood of Jesus. 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 Over this house. At this time, the finished work of Christ. Rekete barakatai deketosa, basika barakataya. Esha debo dosa, shadebo dokotoya. Sapra Kataya. Brother, pray, 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 pray. This is where you came. This is your time. Divine interventions. Divine interventions. Divine interventions. Divine interventions. Shadeli Akapaya Kata. Divine interventions. Yes, Shatela Gadaba. Everything that 
that enough is enough. Enough must be enough. Everything that the time is up. Everything that the time is up. We say enough is enough. We invoke the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Pakasada Gatai. Allah de de bo sabata. Jesus name. What God said is good. What God said is good. The world wants to turn it to bad. We refuse it. Our next prayer point. There are children being raised in our time now that must rise as Moses. That must rise as Joseph. That must rise as Daniels. We are going to weaponize our children. That anywhere they get to, they will become sharp arrows in the hands of God. Listen to me, listen to me. People in dressing house know this, but I'll just say for people. We were in a school here in Lagos in 2021 20, thereabouts. And we're having a conference in, this church, in a church like this. And as we started praying, the power of God came down. And one of the girls, our prayer leader, the team leader is here. And one of the girls say, I want to drink blood. I want to drink blood. Just this January, in the Badon, at the student conference in the Badon, and the, all kinds of demonic, they what, what, I want to swim. I, I, one girl told me, I said, what do you want? She said, I want to kill everybody here. I said, all kinds of things. And my concern is not all those deliverance. My concern are the children that is going to stand as righteousness that will demolish the plan of the devil anywhere they get to. I heard the story of someone that got born again, an abolished Abal son, and he was still a Christian. And the father asked him to go and pick something in the shrine. He went to pick something in the shrine. He has been good to the shrine before. He went to pick something in the shrine. And came and dropped it for the father. The father went back to that shrine later to conjure the demon and ran away. The boy did not pray. He just went there. He just went there to pick something. Our children are being raised. I know we want to do Americanized children now. But some of us that are standing today is because of the things that they planted in us when we were children. Whether you like it or not, some of many of you are parents already, and you will soon be parents. But I'm telling you, the kind of children we are asking God, God help me to raise an arrow in God's hand that will speak to the enemy at the gates. Our children will not leave Nigeria and become gay in Canada. They will not go, they will go there. Demons will be running out of people. I want you to raise a cry and say, Lord, in our generation, raise a generation of fire. A generation of arrows in God's hand in the lives of our children in all our schools. Can you take one minute for that prayer? Zeketu parakas katebarate. Oh, shate parikas kataya. My marriage will not produce children for the devil. My children shall know the Lord. They shall become arrows in God's hand. This is singles and married timeouts. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Don't worry, I know time is going, but this is important. This is important. In 
Jesus' name. Let's pray. There are people here. This place is your well. This place is your own well. You know, this place is your own well because Jesus came. Jesus came. It doesn't matter what may have been before. But now a new order starts. The woman shouted and said, look at this man that is telling me about everything that happened in my life. Look at this man. Jesus sent us here because of you. Jesus sent us here because of you. Maybe so many things have gone wrong in your life. And you are here hearing my voice. Who is that person that have contemplated committing suicide? Don't come out. I don't want to hear anybody. Don't come out. Oh, as we are praying, I want you to pray. Life is about living for Jesus. There's someone here hearing my voice now. We have talked about marriages. We have talked about having a godly marriage. But the truth is that it is not possible for you. It is not possible for you. And you know it. You know it. You know it that it's not possible for you. Because there is a heart in man. That heart can only respond to the nature that is connected to it. It takes God's nature to produce a godly marriage. You can't operate by a carnal nature and expect to produce something godly. God sent us at this year SMTO to call us back. He's calling us. And some of us, you are a believer already. But then the way you are living your life, it doesn't make any difference. And Jesus is saying, come. Jesus is saying, come. Just like he spoke to that woman at the well. He said, I have a water that if I give to you, it will spring up from you. It doesn't end. Maybe there's someone here, you would like to make a decision for Jesus. Or make a decision to, 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 to work on your relationship with him again. Everybody just close your eyes. I want you to pray for yourself. Whatsoever state that you are, if you have been following Christ, can you say, Lord, help me to continue to follow you. But if you are in the category of those people that mentioned, wherever you are, just put your hand on your heart. This is not part of our program. It's not on the program. In fact, I've taken time. But you know that these things she's talking about cannot happen until the nature inside you changes. Or maybe you are used to serve God, but then sin has messed up your life. Things are bad. And you want to say, Lord, let's start afresh. Quietly put your hand on your heart. We don't have time to call you outside, so I won't call you outside. Just put your hand on your heart. Let's start a fresh relationship with Jesus. Keep on playing. Anywhere that you are, you know yourself. There's no, no need to form anything. You know yourself. No need to form. You know that you need to re re revisit your work with God. Thank you. God bless you. Anywhere that you are, put on your hand on your heart. I would like to pray with you now. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.
Pastor Sunday. Go around. Give them sheets. You want him more fair. You want him more fair. You want him more fair. Far Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are making a decision for you now. Even some of them that did not, but they are making that decision in their hearts. And they can hear my voice right now. Lord, I ask that you begin a new journey in their hearts in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, that you begin a new journey in their life in the name of Jesus. Release your grace upon their life in the name of Jesus. Make them new. Anyone that has been messed up by the devil, by the world, I ask, oh Lord, that you renew their lives in the name of Jesus. And I pray for any marriage here that may be going through one storm or the other. I say peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. The God who answers prayer is your name. My wife, I only hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Okay, sit down for 30 seconds. So for the benefit of people who do not know this song, it was our mass choir rendition at Shagam. <laughs> so we're also going to do it. What we noticed in Shagam was, when we started singing the song, there was Holy Ghost party in the house. There was joy. And we also want to see God replicate that testimony in this place in Jesus' name. That when you get back into your room, there's always a joy bustling out of you in Jesus' name. So for the purpose of the people who do not know it. Uh -huh. We're now going to clap our hands. When the thing hits you, you will stand up. Mm. We are going back to CAC. Your hands first. Now, three, three. Everybody follow me. Correct. The God who wants us prayer. The God who wants us prayer, the God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer, the God who wants us prayer, the God who wants us prayer is your name. Let me hear you sing. Yes. Yes. Oh, sing it again. The God who wants us prayer. The one, the one, the God who was us prayer. Correct. Now put your dance. Oh yeah. The God who was us prayer. The God who was us prayer. The God who was us prayer. After this one, the next one is I love be your name. Thy kingdom come. The God who wants us prayer is your name. Hallelujah. You got to be looking at me. We said it in Shagam that we are not praying, but we are making decrees. And the decree is if someone is sick and you say, Father, let thy kingdom come, healing is settled already. 
Because the Bible says in his kingdom, there is joy, there is peace. Yes, in the Holy Ghost. So every matter will be settled by the Lord. This moment is prophetic. And I want you to release your faith for this moment. The second one is, Alone be your name. Thy kingdom come. The God who has us prayer. Let me hear you say, Alone. Alone be your name. Your answer. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer is your name. The God who wants us prayer
last prayer is your name. I don't be your name. I don't be your name. Back it up, come. So God who has that prayer is your name. I don't be your name. I don't be your name. Back it up, come. The God who has that prayer is your name. But you're a suspect. Say glory. No. Leave your seats comfort. Say glory. No. Leave your seats comfort. Say glory. No. 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 I love your name. That kingdom come. The God who has a prayer is your name. I love your name. I love your name. That kingdom come. The God who has a prayer. Go back to your seat, go back to your seat. Don't worry, you are still coming back for a time of thanksgiving. Oh, glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Wow! Someone say, Wow! Someone say, Wow! Someone say, Wow! Someone say, Wow! Hallelujah! With joy shall we draw. With joy we draw. Joy is our draw. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. How many of us have been blessed already? If you know anybody in Abuja, April 6th, we are going to be in Abuja for singles and married timeouts. Can you shout glory? So if you are going to be in Abuja, if you know anyone who will be in Abuja at the time, Please come fellowship with us. I'm going to invite one of our brothers. He's a minister of God. He's a pastor of a church. Uh, you know, one thing that God does in Treasure House is that he gives us songs per season. Since the since beginning, it has always been like that. Songs per season. Remember? Make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever. Jesus. Jesus. Then you remember one of our favorites? You are good. I am. I'm devoted. God give us songs for singing. Our leaders retreat last year. 
was not a leader of our mature singles retreat. And then we were, we were having, I ministered in the night, so I quickly went left the place to go and sleep. So I was in my bedroom in the hotel, in camp, and I was hearing a sound, Kai, and the sound was sounding to my spirit. So I quickly went on YouTube. I, I was sleeping, I was playing it. And then when we came back the next day, it's a long story, I don't want to get into it, and we turned that, that song became an anthem. It became a ladder through which many have found grace. That section is, I've been ministry for years, and it's been a long time. That session was powerful. It was powerful. All right, don't let me sing this song for you. Can we jam our hands together as we welcome Reverend Toby Omojo for 15 minutes? It's going to be ministry. Hallelujah. Can, can you celebrate Pastor Mayo and Pastor Ebon for me, please? Glory to Jesus. Now I've only been married for a few years and I've got my girlfriend in the house. Can you celebrate my wife with me? A great hire. Um, and she, we labor together, uh, Glory Hills Community Church. And of course, aside from being a pastor and being a missionary to the northern region before I return back to Lagos, uh, from moments of fellowship, God has also given me songs from time to time. Just a few, a little above 2,000 now that I've written. And, uh, and one of my culture is I understand when God releases song, it's not first of all to be recorded, it's first of all to bless the brethren. And so Olododolulua that we have been enjoying is actually coming out April 7th. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the first time I'm invited anywhere that and I'm going to be singing my song. <laughs> and because every time there is a sound per season, and sometimes it doesn't have to be your song. And you know this sense of ownership we have. It's alien to the kingdom of Christ. Because there's only one king in our midst. And he is the one. There's only one celebrity. He is the one. There's only one superstar. He is the one. Every one of us, we are brethren. Are you together with me? So we enjoy the sound. Since pastor wanted me to sing it. This is a setup, by the way. But I got to know about this setup yesterday. But it was too late for me to run away. Right. And, and that set up, anyway, it is well. But really, I celebrate them and I love, I love Pastor Ebon. I love Pastor. Okay, now I want to cause trouble. I love Pastor Ebon. I don't love Pastor Mayowa. Uh -huh. You remember Pastor Ebon's teaching? I love both of them. Can you celebrate them with me one more time? Hallelujah. Oh, battle sorrow. Tomule riche. Bobati so beni yo sheri. His words are yes and amen. Oh, he will never fail. He will never fail. O ba to so ro to mu le ri she O ba ti so be ni yo she ri He swears a yes
promises are eternal, and his words never fail. Hallelujah. He oversees his word, bringing them to pass. If he has said it unto you, he will do it over and again. He is the Lord and has never failed. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Pastor Maya was first ministering. I, I, I heard the sounds that it's, it's a harvest of children. You have come into a new season. And listen, listen. And strongly that there are couples who have been waiting here. Your waiting is over. All right. Paradu Venais, Tofeli, Ananda, Riocos, Kebrande, Liane, Nasuvenata, Alabura, Name, Shiaso, Zeneate. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute? We receive the children the Lord is sending. Stephen, Ayona, Marose, Peneliate, Lubarate. We will, we will raise that sound again, and that's why we used to stay upon it. Oh, Lord, no, no, no. He is faithful to his word. He is faithful. I am a moment of Seattle, Comarade. In Jesus' name. Wow. I saw them raining. It was like rain. I saw children like me. There is already a release today. And I believe that by the 11th year anniversary, we will not just gather singles and married, but singles and married and the married children. Ah, that's true. It's a harvest. It's a harvest. The sound I hear in my spirit is jubilee. Is is and I know this 10 years it does not necessarily refer to Jubilee, but you see, when the Lord wants to do a thing, He changes the calendar. You see, this calendar he, he binds you, it does not bind God. God is not in the year 2024. We are the one in 2024. Because He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has the Bible says light and darkness makes no difference before Him. Psalm 139, verse 12. Meaning that time does not revolve around his terrain. And so from that place is where he sends forth his word. And whenever he comes to the right time, he's never late. And you see, he's coming for you. Those who have been trusting God for children, he's coming for you. In 2017, I got a call from, I was in Zamfara, and I got a call from a door state. And there was a woman who was pregnant and carrying the, carrying the pregnancy about for three years. And I mean, if she had not called me by herself, I wouldn't even believe her. I said, this train, except that when I was young and I was, when we, we were in, uh, you know, this Octikupa Riverland area, I saw a woman who was carrying pregnancy for five years. Just going around with belly, no labor, nothing, nothing. And I was just scared and they called me on a Friday. I said, go to the hospital on Monday. Tell the doctor, Pastor Toby said, you have come to give birth. And that is a boy. And he got, she got to the hospital. She 
she said, Pastor Toby said she couldn't complete the statement. She went into labor, and in about 10 minutes, the boy, the boy should be about five or some, 2017 to now, should be about six or seven years old now. Yeah. They are not Yoruba. They, named, they gave the boy my name, Toby. They don't even know what it means. They needed to call me. And say, what does it mean? And listen to me. Everyone here, every couple presented here in this anniversary, trusting God for children. By next year, we will rejoice with you. And I'm not just talking in singles. Some of you, eh, it will not come in singles. It will come in doubles. Can we now sing this song from that realm now? Will it be okay? Oh, battle sorrow. I know you don't know, you just follow. Bobati saw, you only enjoy the chorus. Beni yo sheri. His words are yes. And amen. And he will never fail. He will never fail. Can we take it again? Oba to soro. Oba to soro to muleri she. Buba ti so beni yo sheri. His words are yes and amen. His words are yes.
shout hallelujah and please have your seats thank, thank you he's in his body wait for the thanksgiving hallelujah now we are going to our third talk for today how many of you are ready to be blessed you know I asked my wife to allow me introduce him. It's gonna it's a short, it's gonna be a short introduction. But we 2019, we um, connected with one of our sisters, and she came to SMTO to minister to us. It was an avalanche of grace. It opened a relationship that has lasted till this day. If you notice that we don't generally invite a lot of ministers to treasure house. The ministers you see almost every year, the ministers you see almost every year. The ones you have not seen, they are our people that we'll be bringing regularly. We have that kind of resources. Everybody's doing well, but not everybody can bring. So we've been enjoying DDK. <laughs> she has been, she's, she's, an, she's an official member of treasure house. <laughs> Hallelujah. But today we want to enjoy the D in the DDK. <laughs> With Jesus joy in our hearts, can we rise up and west up? Pastor Ayodeji Kurumi. Can you do it better? Can you do it better? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're happy to be here. Shout hallelujah. Uh, don't worry, my wife would be here. Amen. And I want to thank uh, Pastor Mayor and Pastor Mrs. Uh, Omoni for this opportunity. Thank you for inviting me. My wife spoke of you. And uh, I was uh, wondering how I would, you know, juggle the two engagements I had today. But eventually when the time came, I saw there was some window. And I really want to apologize sincerely. I, I think my session should have started maybe over an hour ago. I sincerely apologize that I, I came late from the previous engagement. Hallelujah. Um, so I'm conscious of time. I am very bad with preaching very short messages, but God will help me this evening. I'm actually very bad at it. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you. Just say after me. Father, I thank you. Because I've come to know that it's by the ministry of your word that you distribute resources. Therefore, I receive that which is mine by the hearing of faith in the name of Jesus. Bless that my eyes for the see and my ears for the hear. Therefore, my heart understands in Jesus' name. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Slap your neighbor a high five and say, welcome to this meeting. Uh, amen. Thank you again, Pastor and uh, Pastor Mrs. Omoni, for the great work that you're doing and you've been doing through this ministry. I think it's a very critical uh, ministry. I was having a... A session, I think that was um, over a month ago with the leadership of the house in our church. And I was emphasizing the fact that um, the matter of marriage um, is so important. And um, there's something about this topic that elicits a lot of excitement, right? Amen. Amen. Particularly from the youth. Am I correct? Anything singles are married, relationship. There is some vibe of excitement that, um, that comes through. I remember teaching, I think sometime last year, and I was saying that I recall that in the university, in our university days, um, we had foundation uh, ministry, uh, which was uh, the session you go through before getting into the fellowship. As, as, a, as a member of the fellowship back then. And the final topic was on relationship. But right from the first time you 
get into the school. We're already looking forward to that uh, relationship topic, the part seven. It, it, was, it was like you couldn't wait to get there. And I, you know, I keep asking myself, what is it about this topic of relationship that really excites us? And I find that it actually excites a lot more the youth. Um, they are married, the singles. Am I correct? <laughs> Amen. For the married folks, it's a little less exciting. Yes or yes? Hallelujah. All right, let's investigate this. Uh, I like always to take my, anytime I'm talking about this topic, uh, Matthew chapter 19. Um, we're going to read from verse 3. And we'll read down to verse 10. Um, so I read very quickly. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, it, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother. I thought it was the wife that would leave father and mother, Abby, and join the man. Okay. For this cause a man shall leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall become one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twine, but one flesh. Wherefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They said unto him, why did Moses then command to give a written divorce, or writing of divorcement, and to put away, to put away? And he said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery, and whosoever married her, which is put away, committed adultery. His disciples said unto him, if the case of the, of the man be so with his wife, somebody read the final part. And Jesus went on and made some other statements. So it is interesting that something that literally started um, by the religious order of the day, the, the, the Pharisees, who were asking Jesus a question. And the question they were asking him was largely to ensnare him. Um, they had looked at the trajectory of his ministry and the things that he was teaching, and they know that, or they knew, that this man had tendencies to go off and uh, off tangent with what they believed was true with the things that they had come to accept by virtue of the laws of Moses. And they had been seeking ways to entrap him with his words. Because from the time he started to speak and, decided, and, and started to work miracles and became a notorious person in his day, they had been seeking an occasion to entrap him, a reason to, to quiet in him, a reason to you know, have something to hold and say this man has blasphemed against God, against the law of Moses, and to entrap him. So, it was a tempting question, all right? So, it says they started to tempt him, asking him the question, not because they wanted to learn anything, but because they wanted to entrap him. But the question was so fundamental and critical, and for Jesus, it was an occasion to bring forth um, truth with respect to the um, ministry, as we can call it, of marriage. And by the time he was true with it, it's interesting that something that um, you would look at as a natural inclination and a natural desire for people to get to a point in their life where they want to get married suddenly became an unattractive proposition. Because by verse 10, as you read, by the time Jesus was 
through with his very short exhortation concerning this subject matter. They said, if this is the way of a man with his wife, they came to a conclusion that it is not good <laughs> to marry. Hallelujah. Some of you would not agree with that, right? But perhaps your disagreement will come from uh, maybe not understanding the depth of what Jesus was communicating about the institution of marriage. And let me backtrack and call our attention to something. Let's go to verse 5. And I want you to see something there. And said, and thank God Jesus helped us to understand that this was God speaking. Because he went back to what was written in the beginning. And we'll get to that, you know, in Genesis 2. And he went back to refer to what was written in Genesis 2. And Jesus made us to understand that it was God that actually made this statement. Because there could be debate about who said what during that period of, you know, Adam engaging with Eve or seeing Eve for the first time and certain things were said. So Jesus made us to understand God actually said this, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and the twain shall become one flesh. I want you to note the question mark there. Um, it's possible because we hear this statement so many times, you can read it without paying attention to the punctuation there, because that punctuation is a very powerful punctuation. It meant Jesus was not making a statement. He was asking a question. But very clearly, he was not exactly asking a question that required an answer. He was asking a rhetorical question. And he was trying to call the attention to something really deep <laughs> and very powerful. He knows that they are cognizant with this writing and with this statement. And he was asking them pretty much, do you really understand what was said here? Hallelujah. So the way to really read it is to say, a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the twine, in other words, the two shall become one flesh. In other words, is that really possible? Is that the reality of what God was saying? Do you really understand the import of this statement that two shall become one flesh. Apologies for those that don't understand Yoruba, but it was, uh, I think the way that, he, that, that it, would, <laughs> it, would, it would come punchy, for those that understand, is that, show ye yisha, you know, do you really understand? Hallelujah. And in the next verse 6, he began to expound on it. He said, wherefore, because of this, they are no more twine, but what? One flesh. Hmm. They are no more twine. In other words, in the realm of God's observation and dealing as far as the marriage institution is concerned, when two people come together and take that vow, it's saying they are no longer two separate people. They may look different, come from different backgrounds, different races. No matter what the differences are, as far as God's realm is concerned, with respect to the spiritual truth, Regarding the marriage institution, we no longer reckon them as two different individuals. 
but we reckon them as one single flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Now you will understand very clearly why scripture says that God hates divorce. You'll understand very clearly why Jesus said that in the beginning it was not so. But because you guys, just like he said to his disciples at some point that there are so many things I want to tell you. But right now, you cannot understand them. When you experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will come into certain truths that the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you. Because in this moment of your fleshly existence, where you don't have the luxury, as it were, of having the Spirit of God indwell you to the extent that you are able to know certain things. Amen. Know certain things, believe certain things. In the place of your heart, to the extent that it transforms the way that you think. So that you can naturally act out in the direction of the truth of God's word that he has birthed into you by the Holy Spirit. Are you following this thing, or this statement that Jesus Christ was making here, I would consider it one of those truths that is difficult to understand. You see, you cannot dimension or come into the essence of it in the flesh. It can only be spiritually discerned. In other words, it can only be spiritually understood. Now, if there is anything... And I'll come back here. If there's anything I want you to leave here with after this session, is for you to really begin to ruminate, whether you are single, whether you are married, to begin to ruminate and let the Spirit of God breathe upon that meditation of your heart to understand that coming into a marriage union, as far as heaven is concerned, as far as God is concerned, you are not two different entities any longer, but one flesh. Hmm. The extent to which you believe this truth is the extent to which you can have and enjoy a blissful union with your spouse. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This truth is at the bedrock of any successful union. Bedrock of any successful union. And as I'm just speaking, I, my, mind, my mind goes to one of my aunties and within a family we say something that she married her husband. You know when people say that? That she married her husband. That there is no other person that we can really think of. <laughs> even our children, even the kids say it. That there is no other person we can think of that can, you know, husband this woman. Except this man. Anyway, I'm not going to mention names, but uh, I also hope somehow they don't get to hear what I'm about to say. <laughs> My auntie will call me. Well, she's over 80, so I guess she's not really on social media. On, so maybe I can speak freely, but hopefully my cousins won't hear. <laughs> but my auntie is a very peculiar woman, right? Very peculiar. But never for once. They, they, you know, they have they have characteristics that seem to be quite so apart from themselves. Amen. Uh, but somehow, you will never, even when you sense 
that the husband does not exactly agree with what she's saying or what she's doing. Never for once made that publicly known in the presence of anybody. He consistently will back her up and she'll back him up. They've never in the front of anybody, the kids or anybody, spoken with two different tongues, so to speak, or disagreed publicly. There's been instances where, because I live with them for a little bit, where, you know, she'll be saying some things, doing some things, and you'll be like, the husband will be quiet, and you'll expect that when he's speaking, he will try to balance things out. Ah! But when he opens his mouth to speak, said, you have heard what mommy said. <laughs> you need to stop doing that. I'm like, really? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Are you following me? Is there a place I can? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Let me move quickly. So as far as the realm of God is concerned, they are no longer what? But one flesh. It is on that basis, really, that the disciples said, it is not good for a man to marry if this is the condition of marriage. Hallelujah. Now let's open Genesis chapter 2 and look at the things that happened there and um, where Jesus began to make reference or pick his reference that we see in Matthew chapter 19 from. Glory to God. Hmm. I'm going to read from verse 19 of Genesis chapter 2. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name. Whatever he called every creature that the Lord built or de developed or formed from the ground, that was what he called them. I want you to understand something about truths, and it will help you to understand what Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 19, and that big question mark there. Understand that for everything that God ordained, he ordained from the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3, in those scriptures, essentially is the seed of everything that we see today and how man has continued to evolve over time. There is no principle regarding the knowledge of Christ that you would not find in Genesis chapter 1. Praise God. And the way that truths work, Truths are eternal, they are unequivocal, they cannot be changed. They are eternal. And when I talk about truth here, I'm talking about the words, the prophetic words that God has spoken and ordained before the foundation of the world. Including your destinies. There is something written about everybody. Before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. But on earth, that truth needs to find expression within humans on the face of the earth as lords of the earth for those truths to be established on the earth. And those that establish truths on the earth are called witnesses to the truth. For everyone, there is a truth that you were born to bear witness to. By your lifestyle, your calling, and your ordination on the face of the earth. 
as you encounter those truths that has been spoken concerning you before the foundation of the world, and you repeat them as ordinances over your life, to the end that you begin to act upon them on the face of the earth, you are beginning to give formation to what God has created. Are you following? We don't create in that sense. We give formation. We give a spiritual body to earthly or heavenly truths. Are you following? Hallelujah. And the reason I quickly drew on that is to call your attention to the fact that out of the ground God formed every beast. But in chapter 1, you would have seen the creation of every beast including man. In chapter 2, you start to see formation of man from the dust of the ground and all of the beasts. Are you following me? Hallelujah. And this is essentially very important to this subject matter. And maybe I'll close on that. But let me just take that and put it in your back pocket. Hallelujah. Amen. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. Or what you call a help comparable to him. In other words, in all of these beasts that have been coming... To Adam, he didn't find any one of them being comparable to him. A help meet for him. And the way to really understand that is to ask yourself, to help with what? Glory to God. To help with what? To find out what that is? It's what we typically call the dominion mandate in Genesis chapter 1. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish, have dominion. That was the mandate upon his life that he needed to accomplish on the face of the earth. So there was no help that was meet for him for the accomplishment of that mandate. Are you following me this morning? So anyone you are coming together with, there should be a question. And that is the fact that is this person a help meet for me? Hallelujah. In other words, the dreams and visions that God has given to me, would it multiply by virtue of this union? Can I come to a place of authority and dominion by virtue of this union? So if you are here, you're single, it's a fundamental question to ask. Everything that you are bringing to the table is there a tendency for this person to tear it down, to diminish it, rather than bringing the substance required to multiply what God has given to me? Are you following me this morning? If you are in a relationship and every aspiration that you have, the other person just looks like, just wants to tear it down, diminish it. You know, looks like just creating roadblocks, roadblocks, and is an objection-minded person. That's some people I call objection-minded people. They, are ju they just see objections, objections, objections. They never see possibilities. <laughs> Praise God. It's a red flag. When people... Sometimes there's really no defined time. Your courtship and the pace of it is really subject to the quality of conversations that you're having. 
I've met people after cutting. I'm just casually asking some simple questions. They say, I don't know. I'm like, ah. Uh-uh. So what do you guys talk about? There was one like that, that, you know, the person was clearly very embarrassed that, how come I've never asked? Fundamental, important questions. When your relationship is not just about going to the beach and going for dates and just having fun. What's the quality of conversations? Are you following me? It's not about the way you feel and all the butterflies in your belly. It won't always be there. Hallelujah. Understand that you're in a life journey. And I will call your attention back to what Jesus said. And the two shall become one flesh. Show ye by. Because if you really understand it, you will be mindful about the choices that you make as far as the marital union is concerned. If you are not mindful of it, your testimony would be that it is not good to marry. There are important fundamental things to check for. And I'm not saying you are going to marry the perfect person. Anyone you are going to marry, God is still working on them. Praise God. But you must find in them the person that is a help comparable to you. I'm not just talking about the man. I'm talking about the woman as well. Praise God. Amen. Because in the beginning when the dominion mandate was given, he said male and female created he them. We just saw the first expression. As a man. But he was speaking to them, 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 and he blessed them. Praise God. So it's not just the man that is looking and every beast that is passing, he said, No, this one is not my wife, it's not my wife, it's not my wife. As a woman, too, you need to be watchful. Praise God. So if you have a sister sitting beside you, say, Watch out for beasts as well. Not everyone is a comparable help. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God forevermore. Because there will be many beasts that are passing. Eh? And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Everyone God has made is, is, is beautiful, is great. And as the purpose of God upon their lives... But I'm speaking contextually now. Praise God. Amen. And God caused, verse 21, a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. The statement is very key. Verse 21, please. I want everyone to see it on the screen. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. What's the next verse? If you have a brother beside you, say sleep. You know, there are two different things. There are some people God is saying you are too awake. You are walking too much in the flesh. Scanning and looking for your speck. This one is not my speck. This one is not my speck. Praise God. And God is causing deep sleep to fall upon you. But you are refusing to sleep. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say, and he what? Glory to God. Amen. (laughs) My beautiful, sweet... Sweet 16 wife. Welcome. You're looking ravishing. I didn't see you before leaving this morning. <laughs> no, she's actually looking good, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. All right. God help me. <laughs> Praise God. Say to the brother beside you, sleep.
so that God can bring out that which is within you. Um, I don't have time. But the truth is that as a man, you should have a vision of who you want to get married to. My amen corner is here now. Amen. You can't just be visually, you know, stimulated. And all you are just looking for is the container, container, just looking at the visuals. You must have a vision. Praise God. And that is what it means to sleep. Catch a vision. And let God show you. So that when that woman now comes around, I call it comparing spiritual with spiritual. Praise God. Because you can then say, this is that. Hallelujah. That's what Peter said when he was describing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He could connect a current reality and what is happening to that, a prophetic utterance. Are you following? You must have a vision so that you can say, this is that that I saw. Hallelujah. A vision has nothing to do with your physical eyes. It's about your inner eyes. Right? So you need to go to sleep. Amen. Amen. I don't have more time. Hallelujah. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto man. Just like he brought the other beast, you know, to the man. But the man had seen a vision. Praise God. Very clear. He had seen a vision. Verse 23. I have to rush through the rest. And Adam said, this is now. That now is very important, right? He's been seeing other things. This one now is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man, even though he was asleep. When God did all the oppression, and God didn't give him any orange oil. Are you following? But because he could see, he could say, this is that. Hallelujah. This now flesh of my flesh, but not my bones. She was taken out of me. Amen. Ah, I wish I could say more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Because a lot happens when you sleep. Huh? Mm. One of the things that happen is that you dream dreams, have you? I will leave it there. Let the Holy Spirit expound it unto you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, glory to God. Let me restrain myself. Verse 25. Of verse 24. Therefore, you can now see where Jesus landed. Therefore, a man shall leave father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. One thing you'd notice here is that Adam spoke. Right? When he saw the woman, he said, This now is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. Single sisters, can I talk to you? Can I hear a loud yes, sir, from the single sisters? All right, so you are plenty. Do I have your attention? If the guy has not spoken, don't make assumptions. Are you following me? The man will always come to the point where he would speak. Don't start having imaginations. Are you following me? Don't start thinking and dreaming and coming into conclusions of what he has not said with his mouth. He has not borne any witness with his mouth 
concerning any truth that he has received concerning you. Are you following me this afternoon? Amen. Adam spoke. And Eve didn't say anything. Eh? You didn't notice that? In all this conversation, Eve no talk nothing. This is a genesis of the expertise of women. <laughs> the married people will laugh because they understand in what is called nonverbal communication. She married him, Abby, but she didn't say nothing. Even some of you will say some things now, Abby. <laughs> she didn't say anything. But there are ways women speak without speaking. They communicate. Both in acts and attitude. <laughs> Praise God. If you read how Naomi mentored Ruth, you'll understand that they can be speaking. The way women toast is non-verbal in nature. There was something we used to call cooler ministry on campus. You're a brother here. You're a beneficiary of Kula Ministry. Let me see your hand. Up. When a woman in the dingy corner of her of her cubicle is fabricating dishes and bringing it to you, and you're just eating and just licking your hands, you say, "We are just friends. She's just my friend." <laughs> Let me share something that happened with a brother in church. We're having a, 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 a meeting, brothers, like a breakout session, and we're just talking, and he, and he said, hey, look, in this place of work, he had just got married about a year ago. In this place of work, he said, I don't understand. This particular lady, I greet her the way I greet every other lady. But when my wedding invitation came out, she confronted me openly. He said he was embarrassed in front of the whole office. You're a wicked boy. This, that, 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 that. How can this? Like, it was a big show. He was embarrassed. And he was in complete shock. But upon further investigation, we realized that he had been a beneficiary <laughs> of Kula Ministry. Lots of time in the office. I won't mention his name. I'll just say, V, V, you, you want lunch? I'll, ah, yes, I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't mind. She goes, use her own money to buy lunch for you. He said, come and take, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. I mean, we're just, we're just cool, we're friends. So he had been benefiting. You see, men, it may be difficult to read nonverbal communication. My wife once asked me, said, it looks like you men, you don't really know when a woman likes you, Abby. You are just there. You can't even read the body language, nothing going on around you. And they ask you, do you know this person that is like me, care? No. All the signals, she send out all the signals, you are not catching anything. You are just there. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And they communicate with the attitude. That one is very spiritual. Uh, yes, it is. Because even while coming, I, I was ruminating on it. I said, how do you actually know that something is wrong? Well, somehow you know something is wrong, but she's not saying anything. Married men. Hello? Do I have witness? There was one brother. We we're having a hangout like that. And he said, Be and my wife. We went visiting some people. And we're all gisting. She was happy. We we're in great mood, everything. Then we enter into the car. And then I just sense the attitude has changed. I should ask him, he asked her, is everything okay? Are you fine? Everything fine? Is everything? 
Guess what she says? She says, yes. You are sure? Yes. If you are a man and you take that yes as a sign that everything is actually okay, you must listen, listen more to that attitude than what is coming out of the mouth. <laughs> are you following? From the attitude you will know is not everything is not okay. You know, I've counseled with couples <laughs> and you see this, this same line. Say she's just giving one attitude that just makes the whole house uncomfortable. Hallelujah. And I like to say this, and I'm sure the married men can bear me witness. When that is going on, and sometimes you may not even, you may be so, especially if you have plenty of things on your mind, right? Work is busy and all of that. You, you may not catch it sometimes. But when you hear the statement, we need to talk. When a, man's, when a woman says, we need to talk. My brothers, it's too late. <laughs> it has gotten to the brim. And when you hear that we need to talk, you just see your heart starts to race. And if she really wants to punish you, she won't do it immediately. So when? Can we talk now? No, 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 no. We'll talk later. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. They communicate, but without saying much. And we can see it with Eve. She not talk anything, but she married the guy. Right? Hallelujah. And Jesus, or God, made that statement. For this cause, in other words, the man had with his mouth accepted this woman as a help, meat and feet for him. And on the basis of that, he pronounced that statement. And the two of them shall become one flesh. And I'll wrap up on this note. When you take your vows before God in the union of marriage, there is a spiritual event that happens. And part of that journey actually comes by sexual intimacy. Hello, somebody. Because of time, you know Paul was speaking somewhere. He said, don't you know that he that joins himself with a harlot is one flesh. That spiritual event that happens by the ordination of God is sealed in the realm of God. But you both begin a journey on the face of the earth to bear witness to that truth that the two of you have become one flesh. The natural occurrences of your journey on the earth does not disrupt the truth. And that is why things can be very unsettling and the marriage decision is so strategic. To the things that God wants to do in your lives. If you're married, praise God. And you don't understand this, the mandate of God which is spoke and has handed to you over your life will become something that is very slow. And for some people, completely derailed. Because the marriage decision is not supposed to cage anybody. It's supposed to cause what both of you carry to multiply. It's supposed to cause fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishment. Sub having dominion. 
Hallelujah. So you walk with your spouse with the knowledge of the fact that both of us have become one flesh. And anything that is happening with respect to order within the home is just so by divine ordination. Take position. As God is the head of Christ, praise God, so also Christ is the head over the man, over the church, and the man is the head. It's, it's, it's about order. Praise God. Divine order. It's not a supremacy battle. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not a women empowerment battle. And, and you know, I say that with every caution. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. It's about divine order so that things can work the way they're supposed to work. Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet and just bless God. Amen. I know we've extended my time a bit, but I, 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 would, I would stop here. Hallelujah. And I just want to pray one prayer. That everything that has been said and that which was not said as well, during this session but to the end that you may understand the truth and the import the fundamental importance of what Jesus was speaking about in Matthew chapter 19 the two becoming one flesh whether you are married whether you're single it applies to you and I pray in this moment in the name of Jesus that the ministry of the Holy Spirit that ability of the spirit to teach will begin to teach you even in your secret places in your private places beyond this conference will begin to teach you and bring you to an understanding of what Jesus was speaking about in the name of Jesus and I pray for every man here in the name of Jesus Especially the single ones, in particular the single ones, that your eyes of understanding be made open. In the name of Jesus, that the vision of the help me comparable to you will dawn on your heart. The prototype will birth upon your heart. In the name of Jesus, not by wishful thinking, but by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So that when you see and encounter that prototype, in the name of Jesus, you will know that this is that which was spoken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. And pardon my bad manners before I leave. I just want to salute every man and woman of God, everyone here present. Thank you very much. God bless you. I honor you. Thank you. Can you do it better for Jesus? Deep-seated wisdom. You know, the Bible says by wisdom, a house is built. When a house is working, you should know there's a wisdom that is in operation there. Can we clap for Jesus? And then let us have our seat. Before we go on, first of all, I would like to appreciate our guests that are here. Uh, in absentia, let me appreciate Reverend Toby Omojo, who just ministered to us the other time. Can we do that better? <clears throat> I also want to appreciate uh, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Aleshin. Please rise up. They are so dear to us, and um, I'm so happy that they are here. Their humility is amazing, amazing.
Amazing. Amazing. He's a pastor in CAC, Christ Apostolic Church, Sheratsin Parish. And thank you, sir, for being here with us. I would also like to appreciate uh, my dear sister. We went to secondary school together. You know how many years ago? 23, 24 years ago. I always like to appreciate that every time. You know, it's not easy to have a secondary school friend that you share the same values and everything. 24 years after. Can you please appreciate Pastor Kofor? I've been telling her to become the president of our alumni. Please, I'm, I'm supposed to see you publicly now. I also want to appreciate Pastor Gabriel Evergreen. That brother. Mr. Isaac Oluwole Kai. It's a long story. And I don't want to get into it, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Sister Thomas Favor. Sister Stella Badamosi. Pastor Nathaniel and the wife. Uh, I'm going to get the other, the complete list. But I can see Pastor at the back. You know, it's a convenient. Pastor, can you please rise up on your feet? Please just do that. I would have loved my wife to do the introduction. Is a maybe she comes, she was gonna do that. I don't want to let it's a serious spiritual something. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All right, quickly before we go on, uh, we are getting I would like to uh, my wife is a strong woman. She's everybody that knows that knows that she's a strong woman. But then before I came on the scene, someone was doing that. If you continue to be so strong like this, you have a problem in marriage. You. And she was, he was training and training and doing so much. Um, and over the years that we've been together, I have had cause to call her and say, sir, okay, let me, let me open one gist. So there was one day I called him. I said, I'm not going to tell my wife sorry. Both of us, you agree. I will not go to, I don't apologize to her. So we agreed. And then I called him. So we agreed that we are not going to say sorry. So when she was calling and doing originally, she, he didn't know that we were just at the back. That said, both of us, we don't agree. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of being blessed through their lives. We slept in their home. In fact, almost every year, maybe because except this year that we came from Shagam for SMTO, before every SMTO, we sleep in their house. I would like to appreciate Pastor Muiwa and the wife. Mujirade, the mentors of my wife from Tikpe Tikpe. And then I would like to welcome. Uh, 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 uh. You know, when, we, when I was introduced, I said the D that makes the DDK. Now the DDK is here as a prophet. I like to introduce, even though this is SMTO, MBR, I always introduce her as prophet. But then I, uh, there's a dimension that she's also bringing here. Prophet Debola Dejikromi is also here. This is our 10th anniversary. Uh, and then, not now, not now. And then I would like to introduce specially. It will be coming later. You can see that he came in his, in his daddy role. His daddy role. You know, as a, as a young convert, when I just got born again, all my life I knew about um, Broglia Connie. My, my mom and Broglia Connie have uh, served together in, in Benway State. Broglia Connie was their prayer coordinator. So immediately I got born again and all that. I knew that that was my lineage. I knew that that was where God was going to position me. In fact, there was a day I was at Boko. Broglia was standing like this. I was standing, I was saying, should I just go and meet him? Maybe it was now. I, just, I, said, I just left. Many times we could have met, but then many years back, I remember my wife brought, and my sister, younger sister, brought a magazine to the house, and I was reading it, and I saw School of Virtue. So fast forward to 2014, we came to Shagam for NLC, and it was at that point that I found that this is my connection to my lineage. We know ourselves, and we don't break ranks. Pastor Shego has been my spiritual father since then. And we are, I insisted that it must be here. He, he, he had administration all the way from Abelkuta. I was running to Lagos. Please, can you just wrap up your feet and appreciate Pastor Shegu Koka? 
is going to be ministering later as well and be a blessing to us. So it looks like we are, we are changing gears to uh, Treasurer's Anniversary Celebration. Can you please have your seat? All right. If you are registered, please check your email. We have something there for you. And media, can you also help me quickly as well? All right. This is our 10th year anniversary. I'm just going to do this in 10 minutes thereabouts because we don't have time. You can scan the QR code and you'll be able to download um, some of us that have our numbers, I've sent it already. If you can scan the QR code and then you download that material that is on your screen. So it's our 10th year anniversary. And it's our year of glory to glory. We gather to brothers and sisters in Christ. We gather today on this momentous occasion, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Treasure House Outreach. And we are just so grateful to God for bringing us this far. Our story is the story of men and women helped by God. I would like to appreciate our board of advisors, our board of trustees, the National Executive Council, the Leadership Council, all members of Treasure House, volunteers and partners of Treasure House. Can I pause at this point? If you're a member of Treasure House, can you just remember, partner, volunteer, can you just rise up on your feet? You are member, partner, volunteer, can you just rise up on your feet? Quickly, quickly do that. I take it out of my time. And I want to so people that are sitting down, can you just say thank you and God bless you to these ones? Anything that we are celebrating here in Treasure House today is because they gave themselves to it. And God bless you so much in the name of Jesus. Right, please have your seat. It has been a journey of faith these past years. And I would like to share with us today in three parts under the topic Treasure House yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Starting with our yesterday. Treasure House story started with the union of the vision and the mandates. You know, Pastor was saying, I have a vision. The vision and mandates of my wife, of I and my wife, Esther Ebolua Omoni. Individually, we have been running different ministries as received from God. I was running what I called D3 Generations and Creative Minds Initiative. I was going to schools to minister to um, young people. I had my first student conference in Sapele Delta State in 2010. And then I have a believers meeting in Sapele as well. I was called the DT33 Generations and Creative Mind Initiative, gathering prefects and all kinds of things, you know, uh, since 2008. Uh, and while she was also running the Extinct Generation Ministry since 2014, when Pastor said at that time, your vision, your vision is key. Because it was the vision that made her chat me. She had a burden on her heart and she was saying that I don't know how to execute this. So she chatted me on Facebook. I said that I see what you are doing. I see what you are doing. And I'm saying, how can I do this thing? So I don't know what to do. I don't know the step to take. So that's how she chatted me. And the rest they say is glory to God. So after and, and that's why and, and that's why we are celebrating both the 10th anniversary of Treasure House and the 10th anniversary of our marriage, actually. And the 10th anniversary of our marriage. Um, we had, after our marriage, because of our assignment and the body in our hearts were so knitted together, we were very similar, we had to bring it to God in prayers. And that was where Treasure House mission was battered. We had our first public meeting under the banner of Treasure Floor Missions. On November 2022, 20, November 22, 2014, but later we evolved into Treasure House Ecclesia Outreach during our registration with the government. This name Treasure House carries a powerful image, just as the Treasure Floor separate the valuable wheat from the chaff. Our ministry is a floor where God works on lives of men to present them fit for His purpose. We call ourselves we are the hand of the body of Christ. Anywhere our local church will not be able to go. God has positioned us as ones that we go into all those places. And as I read on, you are going to see some of the things that we do. And it's also going on the screen. I believe so. Our vision and mandate is simply captured in the statement. Raising a safe, sanctified, and purposeful generation. Can we echo it together? Raising a saved, sanctified, and purposeful generation. From a vision of the night given to me in 2010, I knew a time will come that I will leave all and follow God to the land of Shagamu, Augustate as a missionary. 
And people have asked her, why are you leaving Shagam? Why don't you just move to, with, the, with the work you are doing? Why don't you just move to Lagos? We used to live in Lagos till 2015. But an angel took me through Lagos by the expressway and then showed me a land. I've never been in that land at all. I, I, did not know if, I don't know if it was Shagam. But as I continue to pray, continue to pray, the Lord impressed that this place was the place that we are supposed to be. And uh, during our courtship, I told her, uh, during our honeymoon, she told me that, this Shagam you're always talking about, go and check the place. That's how I left Lagos during our honeymoon and went to Shagam. And in 2015, May, we made a decision to leave Lagos and follow God. And August 20, 2015, we resigned. I resigned my job, she resigned her job, and we went to Shagam. And that's where we have been since till now. Where we came from this morning for this program. <laughs> Only fueled by a clear direction for God, we took this journey of faith, and God has been faithful. Neither sponsored nor salaried by any organization, we continued in faith, and we see the scriptures fulfilled. Hebrews 11 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Permit me to paraphrase. By faith, Maya and Esther, when called to go to Shagam, that they would later receive as their inheritance, obeyed and went, even though they did not know where they were going, as they have never been there before. It has been a journey of faith. We can only thank God and everyone that they are used to hold our hands along the way. Why am I sharing this story? It's because as a young man, as a young woman, there's nothing that you want to do uh, with your life outside the will of God. I know it may not look trendy in our generation, but people look at us and say that we try, that we are trying, you know, ah, you guys are trying. And I usually have some, something in my heart, I say that, what do you expect me to be doing with my life outside the will of God? When you say I'm trying, like I'm doing God a favor by the life I'm living. No, I'm not doing God a favor. If I'm doing anything outside what he's asking me to do, I'm wasting my life. So I'm speaking to someone here, whatever God has asked you to do, commit yourself to it. It has been 10 years of God's faithfulness in our life. I would like to specifically mention the contribution of Pastor Kyle the Amotayo. He's, he's, he's now a local pastor. He was a local church pastor then in Redeeming Lagos here. He supported and guided us when we were searching out God's will as it concerns living all and following God's plan. When we went to Shagam in 2014 to do what I call testing the waters, through divine providence, I met Apostle Daniel Olufemi. He's also in absentia. He has been a solid guide to us in the land ever since. As we were settling in the land, we were also led to meet Reverend Larry Adeneka of Chapel of Victory, Shagam. God used him to open the land to us, and he has been a great support. Why am I particularly mentioning this, mentioning this story? It's because whatsoever God has asked you to do, there are gatekeepers there. And you can't just run into it and feel that there is what, you are, what God has given you, you are the only person on earth that can do it. He personally drove me to the meeting of the regional meeting of PFN and said, please give this my son five minutes to talk to you. It, was, it, were, it were all the senior pastors in Shagam land. The present state chairman of PFN, he was one of the pastors on seat at that day. He was not the state chairman at the time. It was just one of the pastors. And, I, and they gave me five minutes. And 30 something minutes later, I was still talking. The lesson is there, know what God has asked you to do and put yourself in it. Hallelujah. I must also appreciate my spiritual father, Pastor Shegu Koka, whom God brought into our lives at the time he, God, wanted me to connect with lineage that I knew I belonged to in the faith. And if we have seen father, if certain things have been easier for us, it is because under God, we have seen him ahead of us along the journey. And he has literally held our hands on this ministerial journey. Can we please appreciate God in his life? We, we do student conference. And I remember in 2020, before the lockdown, we had a student conference. Over 2,000 students gathered. And they all ate jollof rice. You know, you know, free of charge. They ate jollof rice. They drank coke. They drank this thing. If we were able to do that with faith, it was because I saw SOV feed 4,000 ladies without collecting any money or offering from anybody. I went to Boko, I saw Brogbele and Peace House team feed 20,000 plus people without collecting offering from one day, seven days, two meals per day. If we have seen Father, it's because we have seen this happen in people's life and God has placed him and SOV ahead of us to learn from. Can we once again just appreciate God? 
And we also like to appreciate our mentors, Pastor Muiwa Olufemi, Reverend Duna Miss Okuno, and Mrs. Jumoke Rotimi. I can not share all their stories. At various points in our lives and ministry, they have been used and still being used of God to align us to his purpose and literally hold our hands to remain stable in the journey. Worthy of mention on this occasion is also one of the first persons that really believed in me and supported the first ever student conference and believers meeting that I hosted in 2010 and 2011, respectively in Sapele Delta State. And I spoke to her some days ago. The last time I spoke to her should be 2010. And just about two days ago, she called me. And then we had a long, my wife was wondering, why am I just talking to this man? You don't know what it means when you have a vision in your heart and there's nothing to execute it. And so someone, someone that does not know you from Adam, we just say, okay, I believe in what you are doing. Go and do something. She took me to her office at Chevron, and then we'll be having discipleship in Chevron office. She was the executive secretary at the time. I didn't know what, I didn't know what, what, what an executive secretary was. Now I know that she was not a small woman at all. And she was the secretary, and she was the, maybe executive secretary to OPEC or something, 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 something. Big woman. And she would take Kenneth Copeland books, sit me down in her office, and then she would be discussing with me, teaching me the principles of how to run ministry, how to run your life as a, as a believer. I was just a young boy working in a stockbroker firm at, a, at an investment house then. And how did we meet? She came to buy shares in my office. I'm not the receptionist. She sat, she just came into the, I don't know what happened to her receptionist, but she was not on seat. So I just decided to sit at the receptionist's place. And then she came in, it was at the heat of the depression of 2008. That, that shares, serious, and she just walked in. She, she looked like this, investment at first floor, fourth floor. And she looked like this, she looked like this, she said, do you sell shares there? I said, yeah. Me that they've been pressuring me to go and meet targets before. So I said, yes, we are selling shares, we are selling shares. <laughs> but fast forward, she told me that she was in her office and God said, go to that place. You know what the divine, co <laughs> divine connection is? She said, go to the, she does not need the shares. She just woke up into the office and said she wants to buy shares. Gave me one million naira to buy shares. You know, when people were saying they were suffering from, they were sacking everybody in the company, in the other stockbroker firm, they didn't sack anybody in our office. Because somehow, somehow, God was just keeping us. And that, so I appreciate, I know she will be watching or she'll be listening or she'll watch later. I want to have say, I appreciate you so much for the role that you played on this journey. God bless you, man. Can you just say, God bless you, man? Thank you for believing in that young man that was even struggling to believe in himself. I told her that some days ago that all the monies you give me for transport, I use them to buy books. She was shocked. I never spent it on myself. All the monies that she gave me, I, I will buy the book, I will write, I will write, presented by Princess Ayn. I will write it on it because I knew that what she was doing, she didn't know what she was doing, but it was an investment in the generation. I appreciate her so much. God bless you, ma. So to continue the story of my yesterday, let me go faster now. To continue the story of uh, yesterday, the seed was fully planted on arrival in Shagamogu State. And we started serving as full-time missionary evangelists. Alongside our, our team members, we were just a small group that filled a small room. But fueled by faith and a desire to serve, we laid the groundwork for this ministry. We embark on this journey, unsure of what the future holds, yet resolute in our commitment to Christ. And today, we are a growing field. I remember those on the beginning. One of our brothers said, he stood up now. It's one of our board of trustees. We we'll gather in his house at um, Egbeda. It was just a small house. We were there. Some of us were there. And we we'll would we'll pray for hours. That was where God said, prepare. Because the crowd is coming. It was the beginning. And thank God for where we are today. From those humble beginnings, stretching us as blossom into a very vibrant community. On site and online in different locations around the world. We have witnessed tremendous growth in all our ministry formations. Talking about our uh, formation, okay, I've talked about, uh, we, are, we reorganized the ministry. And during the reorganization of the ministry, after we did the first stage, DDK had become a friend. I, I pressured her through her business and everything. I said, come and have a discussion with our leaders. And she took out of her time. I remember at Jaden, she was through Zoom, through one of these online platforms. She trained our, our leaders and everyone that was available at that time, free of charge. She didn't collect every money. And you know, people will can, can clap. People will wonder that what, what are the 
connections that you make. People just think that we are doing farm zing with, uh, no, we don't, this covenant relationship. When I know that someone, that someone has a role, someone has a role to play in a team, that's how I connect to anybody. I can begin to invite her every year to be minister. I don't care about the person that is trending, the trend, next trending minister, because I know that this person has a role to play. And so every time she comes to Treasure House, I know God starts a new season. That's our role. Everybody that's been with us will know that. That's true. Hallelujah. And interestingly, let me say this, it's not in my notes. Most of the time, Pastor Shegu and DDK will always minister at the same time. And something used to happen. The, the last time that book was 2019. Kai, AMBR 2019. They will never forget boxers, huh? The brothers, they will never forget boxers. All right, so, um, so we are established now, we are structured uh, the five expressions that we have are children's and teens ministry. If you meet us at a certain place, you will say we are children's and teens ministry. You see our work in schools and all that. But another time you will meet us and say we are relationship, relationship people. And that time you will meet us, you say, ah, these people are into discipleship. And that time you will meet us, you will say we are evangelists and missions. That you will see us in the village. And you see us running, you know, some of the pictures that I need these things to be going, we don't have time to be showing them. Uh, Evangelism and missions ministry, we have the believers and the workplace ministry because we realize that everybody will not be Mayo and Esther. There are believers that will stand at their post and serve God wherever they are. And then, uh, so we, we, we that's, that structure is in place. All right, let me just move forward. In the last 10 years, we have seen over 500,000 children and teenagers reached in over 1,300 schools, communities, and churches in our outreach program. Both in Nigeria and uh, outside Nigeria. Last year, we were in uh, Accra, Ghana. We went to 36 secondary school. And I will also use this opportunity to appreciate kingdom leaders for supporting that work. Uh, can we appreciate kingdom leaders for supporting that work? We were in Accra for about five weeks. We went to 36 secondary schools. And people said, you are not registered in this place. In fact, even me, when I got there, the, the, our partner, Passion Bearers, was like, they are the ones registered, so we have to go through them, through the schools, get the government approval. But they don't know how we work. It's not their fault. They don't know how we work. We have a short time. You have all the time. <laughs> so um, we got there and they said, ah, we are going to be very busy. We are going to be busy. So we saw the schedule and said three schools in one week. So we nine of us left Nigeria to come to Ghana and be going. What are we going to be doing all the days since? Uh, so my wife insisted. So even though we are not registered in Nigeria, let's use our letterhead. And we're not in Ghana. Let's use our letter. We were, not we, are, we are still not registered in Ghana. We took our letterhead to all the schools that we went to, and the doors were open. Pashegu has told me that this thing you are doing is strange. Don't take it lightly. So anytime I remember that it's not, it's not, it's not human being. There are angels that are speaking over it, and we thank God for that. Um, then we have our street to school projects. We have three teenagers currently under our roof, and that's what I would like to. I would like if you can show everyone as well. Uh, one of the projects that after going to all those schools, we come across across children, all kinds of children that so many things have happened. We felt that you can't, you can't. At least mute it now. Relax. <laughs> uh, we, we can't um, take a child, rescue a child from a system and put him back into that system, and we expect the child to be transformed. So we have to take some of them um, into our home. We have three of them in our area. I'm hearing my voice, and they are doing so well. They are doing so well. But then we felt that we had to, there are so many children we had to put back in their families. And we hear all kinds of stories that we do not really um, appreciate. But then we felt that this is what we need to do. We need to build a place called Ibron Mission Home. And, and quickly, I want you to um, make a decision to partner with us because this year we have started building already. God gave us a seven plots of land. Seven plots of land is going to have a meeting center, it's going to have a school, it's going to have a mission home. And this year we started building. We first, we've almost completed the first round it, and then we are going to start building by the grace of God. So I'm just asking you to be a partner to it. And we have said the work will not stop, yeah. it will not stop. Yeah. And I would like if you can show us the image for the Hebron, the actual image as well. So we have the relationship and family life ministry, which, which is the reason you are gathered here. Since 2015, we hosted the sing Singles and Married Time Out. We've had uh, Pastor Maureen with us. We've had DDK with us. We've had Pastor Shegu, so many, Pastor Lafemi Lazarus, so many of them. 
and it has been amazing. But that's not just the testimony of hosting meetings. That many of the people you are sitting here, they came here as singles to stupor. <laughs> Which many of them, they don't know much. They, they are fine, but they don't really know much about their, how their marriage is going to be. But one of the persons that we, she's not here because she, she wanted to be here, but I just told her, she just gave back two weeks ago. She came into our home. She told me that, um, she posted the testimony. She came into SMTO 2017 as just a young, confused girl. She saw the flyer on Facebook. And just as, since that time, she attached herself. I was glad to be the one that joined them on their wedding. And I was, I'm, I'm proud to be at that naming ceremony. I'm proud to see a, a marriage blossom. I told her that you are going to raise a different generation. So, and that has happened. In, and I'm just happy. Look, many of them that are here now, they are looking so fine. And, you know, I'm so happy at what God has done through this particular meeting. We have over 2,000 singles. Let me round up now. <laughs> we have over 2,000 singles go through our single scream. And then the mature single scream. We have, we have all kinds of discipleship efforts to, to, to them build solid marital life. Because if we don't start building some of these, some of these people, we will still have to go to, their, to the schools of their children to be helping them. So we want your own home, your own marriage to be, to be the less of those. So that's the Hebron. That's Hebron. The first house there is the mission house. The next one is a chalet. The next one is the hostel. And then you have the meeting hall. Uh, by the grace of God, you will see it physically. Yeah. All right, we have the spiritual formation and maturity ministry. We have a lot of people say that I'm now born again. What next? So we say, go and join a living. The way we do it, go and join a Bible believing church. And they are in Bible believing church. Ten years later, they've never won one soul. They've not grown in their character. They joined a Bible believing church. So we, we, we needed to do something serious about it. And then God has helped us over the years. We host the Read the Bible Challenge. It will be amazing that some people have, been, have gotten born again for 15 years. They've never read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So I challenged them. I said, you can read it. The first thing is read. When they read, first of all. So I took them through. The first one we did was 90 days, right? 90 days in the Bible. And we finished it. We did 60 days in the Bible. And we finished it. Then we did 20 days in the New Testament. Drunk, my wife will carry the Bible like this in the middle of the night. She'll be dozing, she'll be reading but we committed ourselves to reading. Then we got into study. We got into study. We, we, we do all that so that we can become solid believers. Not just speaking in tongues alone, but then our character will show that we are Christians. Our character will show that we are trusting God that God is doing that in our lives in the name of Jesus. We have the evangelism and missions ministry. After our AMBR in, um, after AMBR in 2020, right? 2020. After we finish AMB, God said the meeting has not finished. So I declared that we should continue. And we started praying every day, serious prayers. And I, I think on the eighth day, God just said, Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. And then that's how we left everything. And we went to one village, Orilioko village. We were there. On, about 100 of us went to the village. It was a serious meeting. And since that time, we've been going around villages, ministering, uh, going around villages. Our the mission director is not on seats, but it's, it's around. All of them are the leaders in the ministry. And then we have the believers in the workplace ministry, which I've talked about tomorrow. All right, get into tomorrow. What next? As we celebrate a decade of impact under God, it is also a time to look into the future. The world continues to evolve at an unprecedented pace, presenting new challenges and opportunities. Let us use this lesson's length and the momentum we've built to sow new seeds for the future. This anniversary is not just a celebration of the past, but a launch pad for the future. Just as a farmer sows seeds, expecting a bountiful harvest, we are reaffirming our commitment to spreading the gospel. We are hungry for more of God. We want to see more souls saved among our young people in particular. It's, a, it's, a, it's now a serious body in my, in my heart. When I see, when they said that Shagamu is the... Um, I, University of Yahoo Yahoo Boys. I just want to learn Yahoo Yahoo Boys. It's, it's a menace in our society. They're everywhere. What can we do to rescue these young people? I see God helping us to do more in that regard. We want to see land conquered for Christ. We want to see family blessed. 
We want to continue to be a beacon of hope, a place of solace, and a source of Christ's love in our community. We are not relenting. If in 10 years, treasure now, listen to me in particular. If in 10 years, we have been able to reach over 1,000 schools, we want to triple that in the next 10 years. And we celebrate that we have done 1,000 schools. But do you know how many schools are in Nigeria? 1,000 is insignificant compared to the number. We said we have reached 500,000 students. Do you know how many young people are in Africa? Millions. Africa has the largest young, young population in the world. There's still a lot of work to do. So I'm asking us to join us, to partner with us. You can serve with us as a full-time staff. You can volunteer with us at our events. You can utilize your skill, your education, your whatever it is to help with the work. You can join us as a registered member. You can commit to monthly or periodical partnership. You can decide to say 5,000 and I will go. I'm rushing because over time, you can say 5,000 and I will go from my salary every month. You can commit to it. When I learned about how the, the Muslims do their thing, every portion go to something. You can also make that decision and say, you are also going to do it. I'm inviting you to be part of it. I'm inviting you to be part of it. Make a decision that you are going to support the work that we do. A lot of people don't like, also like to go into missions because they feel that missionaries are going to suffer. But I want to say, if you rise up, if you decide, we have some of our team members here, they are full time with us. And I'm asking us that beyond the work that you support as well, that you support them. You can sponsor their children through school. You can decide I'm going to pay uh, school fees for their children. So one of, our ch one of our sons that go to a school, our pastor has a school. And he said Emmanuel is not going to pay tuition. Emmanuel has been in that school for about six years, four years, and never paid tuition once. Some of us can do that as well. I say, okay, I'm going to be paying tuition for this boy. I'm going to pay and I'm going to, I'm going to support this missionary, husband and wife. He and he, she and her husband, they're also full time with us. They are the ones in the battle. We can also say every month we are going to be doing something with them, and I'm asking you to do this in particular. In conclusion, this past ten years haven't been without challenges because the way we are saying it, like everything is just smooth, just moving. Uh, but then there have been so many challenges, but through them all, our faith has remained strong. We remember today two of our members that have joined the same triumphant, Sister Ruth Agby. She was a national worship uh, team coordinator at the time. She's now with Jesus. And it's on, it's a, this is a good occasion to, because the last time she served was at SMTU 2018 or 2019 that she served. She's been with Jesus now. And then we want to also note uh, our sister, Mrs. Bukola Femi Johnson, the wife of our, one of our board of trustees. She also be with Jesus. Uh, we, I, I watched one of the videos I was telling yesterday that the last time I saw on the video was at a single time but a, and on, on one eve we stayed in their home but then she's been with Jesus it's something to celebrate, it's not to mourn at all I would also like to remember my younger sister Temita Yo Abike Omoni I needed to do this the first student conference I had after um, uh, after my youth service, she was there with me we were about 17 members and she told me, say, my brother we are going to do great things for God uh, but Jesus took her in 2012. Uh, it's, it's, every time I talk about it, it's, she, she died March 10 or 12, 2012. And then I just thank God for the life that she lived. I look forward to seeing all of you in heaven. Keep resting at the bosom of Christ. Threshing house. We have learned, we have grown, and together we have become a beacon of hope in our communities where we serve. Looking ahead, let us use this anniversary as a springboard. Let us recommit ourselves to the teachings of Christ. Let us continue to spread this message of love, of compassion, and forgiveness. As we embark on that next chapter, may we be guided by the words of Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Thrust in the Lord with all your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. With unwavering faith and a spirit of unity, there is nothing we cannot achieve. Let us continue to walk hand in hand inspired by the love of Christ for many years to come. Can we all say this together? We are men and women on a mission. Let's say with faith, we are men and women on a mission. Partnering with God to raise a saved, sanctified, and purposeful generation. Treasuring us members, can you rise up on our feet and you say, we are men and women on a mission. Partnering with God to raise a saved, sanctified, and purposeful generation. Thank you all for coming to celebrate with us. Happy anniversary, Treasure House. And happy anniversary, my wife. She's not
not in the notes, so I will say it. I also want to appreciate my wife for following. It's not easy to follow. She has been a Lagos girl all her life. But I took her away from Lagos. We slept, we slept. One day we went to minister somewhere with one bike. I was wearing a suit. She was wearing one fine clothes like that. And rain started falling. And both of us were looking. And we were, instead of, we were not crying, no, we were laughing. Because we can't have the privilege to follow Christ. I love you so much. Thank you for following me. Thank you for following this Abraham. To everywhere. We've traveled in planes together. We've gone on. The only place we've not gone is inside boats. We need to get our boats. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. Oof. Like I was saying before the start of the meeting, today is just like an intermission of our rehearsals. So I also want to believe that the past 10 years, we were doing rehearsals. It is a call to walk. So that was why at the initial stage of this planning, we weren't planning like we wanted to do anything because I have a sense of urgency that we need to walk. Like I shared during my session, there are times I feel very tired. And then my husband will say, stand up. If I refuse to stand up, he will say, when they call you another student is raped, you will stand up. And then I will stand up. So this is a call to walk. A call to walk for everyone who has been a part of this ministry. I know we are grateful. And as a matter of fact, God wants us to be grateful. We cannot because of the joy of the next. We lose the joy of the present. He has been good. He has really, really been a good God. When we started, we didn't see so much. The only thing we had so strong was the word of God. Go. That was all. But over the years, God has been speaking to us. Like I always say, if the Lord is leading you to do something, sometimes he will not tell you everything there is. But for every step of obedience, he comes to tell you what is next and what is next. It is your obedience and faithfulness that brings you into what is next in your life. So I also want to celebrate all professionals, leaders. Many people started with us, but so many people couldn't see so far. So many people left, some because of their personal issues, some because they just felt like we're just going to secondary schools, we're just going to villages. So what's the point? Some were tired, but really, sincerely, it takes the fortitude of the spirit to run this race. I've had seasons where I was locked up in my bedroom and I was crying. I was tired going to secondary schools, counseling hundreds of teenagers who are sexually violated, battered. Recently in Ibado, we had a case. The student cried to us and said, there's an elderly man who has been sleeping with me. He started sleeping with me when I was 10. So I said, okay, when was the last time he slept with you? She said that was maybe when she was 13. She currently has a boyfriend. She doesn't sleep at home regularly as well. She's been sleeping out. So I said, okay, let's go meet the man. She said, ma, you can't go to see the man. The man is an herbalist. How do you go to approach an herbalist that is raping me? I laughed. And then I said, let's start with you. I led her to Christ. When we were done, I told her, my history, I'm from generation of masquerade worshippers. So there is nobody that can, you can't threaten me with, with, with what? I know what it takes to be in Christ because I gave my life to Christ when I was 10. I know how to war in the spirit. I know how to stand in faith. I encouraged her and she was ready. She said, mommy, let's go and meet the abalist. And then I took Ayoba. We went to the house. We met the abalist. I sat down in his house. I crossed my leg. I was wearing jackets. I was looking official. And then I was engaging the man. To cut the long story short. 
he confessed. He said, I've been sleeping with her. The guardian said, he's been begging. We are neighbors. In fact, we are family members. So close. So let him just go. And the girl, I said, if we take this matter to the court, we're likely going to lose. For the past six months, you've been sleeping with your boyfriend. If I take you to the clinic, no results will testify that this man never slept with you. So what do we do? Let's just leave it. But where am I going? We called the mother. Your daughter told you this man has been raping her. What did you do? And what did I see when I saw the woman? A young woman. She looks to me like a virgin ground. A woman who has not found herself before she started having babies. She already had five children and she cannot even nurture one of them. And she has, she has been on the on the streets, looking for other relationships. And then I said, what did you do when your daughter told you she was raped? She said, ma, let me say it in English. What did you do when your daughter reported to you she was being raped? She said, I deleted the contact of the man from my phone. How did that transform into... So that alone showed to me the reason why we should keep on doing marriage seminars. That alone showed to me the reason why we need to begin to, you know, impact knowledge. That alone showed to me that if nothing is being done, many children who do not even call us to give birth to them, they will suffer. And this is a call to work. Our leaders, we celebrate you for hanging on, for running the journey. The Lord bless you. No matter what we have done, it was Riaza. Welcome to Real Work. All our team members, our volunteers, our partners, everyone who has been a blessing. Please, it is a call to work. It started already in January. We were in outreach, and I had an urgent knowing that we needed to go to Hebron, that portion of land God gifted us. And thank God we have unity of spirit. My husband was supposed to meet me in Ibado, but he stopped at the place only to find out that the Omonilis they were already reselling land to new people. They even leased out our land for somebody to be cultivating uh, cassava, to be planting things. They collected money for rent. That was how we started the work. We, we said, let's do defense. Let's do everything. The Omonile came. They built us 1.2 million for Monile, Omonile fees. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff started to happen. And in the space of three months, January to March, I've lost 5 kg. We've been going to that land, working with the bricklayer, praying for funds, getting to do the work. Both of us, we've been the one going to the place because everybody's working in the office. And I do tell myself, this is why we are not working in the office, so we can work the work of the Father. If the Lord is also calling you into this work, you're welcome. We need more hands. At the beginning, it could be like you want to waste your life because that is what people say. You, you are not collecting salary. Nobody's paying you. Okay, fellow, waste life. Eh? This is a very good way to waste your life. Come and waste your life the way we are wasting our own. You're welcome into the field. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, because of our time, we need to run. We are going to have the next session. And before I bring the person up, I want to share briefly about our relationship with this ministry gift. So I think in 20, was it 2018? Agape. 2019. So we're to have our singles and married time out. We're praying to God for leading us to who to invite. And somehow over the years, my husband has been listening to the ministry gift I'm about to bring up. And then my husband said, let's invite her. I was so excited. But one thing about me is I pray so pretty ahead that God, this person you're bringing, let this person bless my life. So I prayed. And thank God when she came, exactly what the Lord told me was what she said to me. And I was so like, wow. That was the very first time that I felt that connection with her. Like, this is my sister. And over the years, she has been a blessing to the house, to the ministry. And let me say this. If I do message you, the rate at which I think about you, I would have choked you. <laughs>
So I told my husband, I said, if I'm checking on GDK, the way I'm thinking about GDK, it would be like there's something else. So we love you so much. For every time there's going to be a tweak in season, God always send a word through you. Even having conversations with you, we've had many confirmations, many seasons of nourishing. Thank you for being such a blessing. We're going to have the ministry of Prophet Debola de Jikurumi. But before then, as a ministry, please, we want to give DDK our flowers. By April 6th, we would be in Abuja because we have another event in Abuja. So we feel we're going to do Threshing House birthday for DDK 40th birthday. DDK, you're a blessing. Your life has been an inspiration. And we know this next decade you're coming into. You come at Susile. <laughs> ah, yeah. I was in my room, and then we were thinking of, okay, what can we do? So I said, okay, let's make a frame. So I gave the instruction, we are making a frame for DDK. Then I was praying about two days ago, and as I was praying, Joshua 21, 45 kept on ringing my heart. I said, this is DDK's scripture. Then I called the lady, hope you have not done the frame, because there's a word we're going to print on the frame. So you can help DDK with the flowers. So let DDK see. This. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the word for the next decades. You're a man who will see the word of God come to life in every aspect of your life. And the word of God will never be scarce in your mouth. It will open the treasures of heaven unto you. I prayed one prayer for someone. I said, I see you like a tap. Where people bring their cups. And they begin to get from you. But I said, that tank is the conduit. God is the source. To my sister, I want to say that your source will never run dry. The word of God will continually come to you. Because what really makes you is the word of God in your mouth. It will be flowing. Every word for every season will be coming. And even for you, because as ministers, I know sometimes people just come collecting from us. We have a very tiny cycle of people who feel like, I need to give to you. So God will give to you. And this is the word. Not one of the good promises that the Lord has spoken to you, Prophet Debola de Jikurumi, has failed. They all have come to pass. In April, on April 6th, it will be your 40th birthday. We will not be around. We will be in Abuja. But this is our own way of showing you love. We value you and your impact. Thank you. Yes, you can go up. We are going to have man of God. You have to follow your, your wife. <laughs> it is follow come. So, Treasure House member, the musician, we are doing proper birthday song. Yeah, so she can be there. <laughs> but somehow you are, you can actually put it at the front. Can we be on our feet? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. In one voice. I want everybody to say, God bless you. Can we go ahead? Amen. Prophet Debola de Jikurumi. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless your ministry. 
The Lord bless your family. It is from glory to glory. You're a refined wine. You will never go sour. In the name of Jesus. We celebrate you, man of God, for nurturing our sister. Thank you for your impact. Thank you for your leadership. We celebrate you. Anytime she wants to minister, she's always doing crushing, crushing. She will say, my husband, everything like that, everything, everything. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Can we take pictures together? Leaders, can we come around? Daddy, daddies and mommies, please, sirs. Please, sirs. Pastors around, can you just come as well? Hallelujah. So we have Treasurer's Worship Team. And then immediately after, Pastor Debola de Jikrumi will be. Um, so as the choir is singing, if you'd like to give your offering, you'd like to give a seat towards uh, the ministry, you'd like to partner with us in any of the things that we are doing, please, the account details will be on the screen. And your shares will also go around. You can drop your offerings and your seats and your partnership. So choir... Let's do that quickly, 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 quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Are we tired? Somebody shout glory. glory. Can you look to your neighbor by the right and tell your neighbor, God has never failed and he won't start now. Face a neighbor and tell your neighbor, God has never failed and he's not going to start now. Can you face another neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm going to make it true. Hallelujah.
morning. This is my story, this is my song. I have a story to sing. And here's my testimony. Rain came, we blew. My eyes was filled with you. Well. Oh, I'm saved. I'm saved with you. With you. I'm going to make it through. Masato leke viata Erraga da 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 Shapande ya delivery ya sulamande Ale barege veve washo talamana koya ya Erraga da baradi ya leveve koshe Televerege velo tobasa Aya de 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 weleve rusa kosha te Anana velelele werogo veleve ria osaba E bara vele de de we so tala de la baria kia ele masu tele vere ge badia osata araba da ba kopele ge de velo sata iraba ba su tele ge de we ele velo ale bore ge vele lele eraba dos kaparia ya eraba skoporo ge vele ge de ayana mama kia de le ge vele ge badia osa. As katolo kono bere kevele beri osaba, ere bede bede ba kosha na na nuyate, ere bede bele kevia kori ana male kevelo lo 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 kobadi ya davia osa. As katos, ere wele kede ya deleba, ero bode se wele kede welo kodo osa, ana mali osaba, ere bebe be katolo kono bari osina osa. Satela de lelel suya tele frega de yaberios meno kabele leviosa. Let's just take a few minutes to actually just go deep, deep today. There's such a weight of glory in this atmosphere, and sometimes when we come to a singles and a married conference, we're getting emotional in the conversations. But there's such a move of the spirit here. We are not mere mortals. And when we come to this spiritual Zion, things can happen 
that are only fashioned by the hands of God. He said, we have come to a heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to God, the judge of all. We have come to the spirit of just men made perfect, to an innumerable company of angels in festal gathering. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling, or Yabeloka, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Are you going to pray yourself into a move today? Elabaru sokonda labaria sava, eroku yaliga delebero vobelo siyasa. We want to move. We want to move. Move over our lives. Move over our homes. Move over our marriages. Move over our futures. Move over this ministry. Move over our bodies. Move over our spirits. Precious Holy Spirit, you are all we have. You are all we will ever need. Let's make it a moment of consecration. Just for one or two more minutes, would you pray some more in the Holy Ghost? Would you pray some more in the Holy Ghost? Would we yield ourselves to Yahweh today? Oh, Move. Holy Ghost, move. Hey, move, move. Holy Ghost, move. Move, move. Is that your best prayer today? Crying out for him to move. Holy Ghost, move. Hey. Holy Ghost, move. Can we lift up threshing house, ecclesia outreach to Yahweh? A decade of destiny, and yet so many more decades. Aye, Baragio Sebande. Move, move, move. Holy Ghost, move. Move, 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 move. Holy Ghost, move. Araba teko yelegade. Flow like a river. Burn like a fire. Move, move, move. Holy Ghost, move. Flow like a river. Burn like a fire. Erupt like a fountain, move, move, Holy Ghost. Just two more minutes, let's still pray some more. Press in. We need him. 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 We need him for our lives, for our future, for ministry. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're going to pray three prayers very quickly just to ride the wave of what the Lord is doing today. Just to ride the wave of what the Lord is doing. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of Yahweh is resting upon us. I want you to cry out 
for access to light into your spirit. There's a dimension of God's glory that is so weighty to rest upon you this year, this season of your life. And when glory comes, God takes you out of hustling and straining into divine advantage, covenant advantage. But oftentimes, it takes light to enter into the next realm of glory. Cry out for revelation knowledge. Open the eyes of my heart. Cry out for customized revelation knowledge. The specific answer that I need for my life. So that I will not walk in error. So that I will not walk in confusion. So that I will not miss my seasons. Father, open the eyes of my heart. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I receive counsel. I receive understanding. I receive a word in season. I'm a son of oil, a child of answers. Aloko Rabesi Malabahata. Radabara Kosi Levende Labas. Elokose Beno Bela Kuzava. Adozo Loko Belande. Secondly, I want you to pray for the operation of the Spirit. To walk consistently in dominion over sin. This is a provision of covenant. It's already part of the package of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ that brought us redemption. Dominion over sin. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so that you can understand what you have been born again to overcome. He said the world and the things that are in it are passing away. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Scripture says you have overcome the lust of the eyes. You are born of God, you have overcome the lust of the flesh. It has a good place for an amen. You are born again. You have victory over the pride of life. I want you to release spiritual desire in the direction of dominion. A time comes in the life of a saint where it is no longer fancy to be riddled by besetting sins and weights. Destiny calls. Destiny calls. Destiny calls. Destiny calls. There's a warfare that is ongoing in the realms of the spirit concerning our souls and Christ is speaking over us today saying to us that haven't been born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and abides forever he said we should not walk in the flesh so that we will not fulfill its lusts he said to us to be conformed not to be conformed to the image of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we're able to prove the perfect, good, and acceptable will of God. I want you to release desire in the direction of holiness, consecration, of spiritual maturity and dominion over sin. I want you to speak over your body, your soul, and your spirit today that I'm yielded to the living God. The Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of holiness, continues this work in me. No matter how high the demands of destiny may get, there's a higher supply of the Spirit. You can walk in purity. You can walk in holiness. You can please the Lord. This is a good place to pray better. Receive help. Receive help. Dominion over sin. Dominion over self. Dominion over sickness. Dominion over the systems of the world. Dominion over Satan. We have an advantage. Strength for destiny. In the name of Jesus. Now, let us pray for oil. 
Let us pray for oil in our lamp. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oil in our lamp. Cry out to the Lord for a fervency of spirits. That your heart will burn for Yahweh. Cry out to the Lord for fresh oil. You will not be dry. You will not have droughts. Fresh oil. Father, give us oil. A fresh move of the spirit. A fresh passion for prayer. A fresh fire for the Lord. An urgency in the spirit to walk with the Lord. Cry out for fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh fire. Hallelujah. So te baraga Reselandos. In oko bari a lo bene viko bela zo zo no kosi la kradi bahande. I pray for you from my heart that you will walk in the fulfillment of prophecy. Every intention of Yahweh over us as a people, every desire of God over your life and your future, I declare that there's a mobilization of heavenly resources toward accomplishment. It's your year of prophetic fulfillment, divine accomplishment, supernatural speed. Your path is accelerated on the journey to destiny. When you push in the direction of destiny, heaven will pull for you in the name of Jesus. Your eyes will see, your ears will hear, your heart will understand. You are divinely helped. You are divinely helped. Look at this. Have you not heard? Have you not known? That the everlasting Lord, He is God. He is the maker of the ends of the earth. There's no searching of His understanding. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, increases strength. The young men shall fail and the youth shall utterly fall. But, I said there's a but. No, you didn't hear me. There's a but. It said the young men shall fail and the youth shall utterly fall. But, I said there's a but. Those of us who wait upon the Lord, we will be strong. Those of us who wait upon the Lord, we will renew our strength. We'll mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and we will not be weary. We will walk and we will not faint. That's your testimony. There's a fresh dimension of strength coming into your life. You're not going from meeting to meeting, becoming the same person. God is making us. God is making us. God is making us. You will be a proof of covenant. You will enter into the rewards of destiny. Your labor of love before the Lord is not forgotten. And it must speak. I heard the Lord say that in the course of the next decade, he'll give threshing house a billion souls. I was seated there when he said it to me. In the course of the coming decade, he'll give threshing house a billion souls. Can we receive that? Can we receive that? Can we receive that? Can we receive that? Ah, uh, I don't want to preach about receiving, but giving and receiving are two extremely 
different covenant phenomenons. God knows how to give. Saints don't often know how to receive. I said, can we receive that? You receive rejoicing. Hallelujah. You receive rejoicing. That's how to receive. That's how to receive. Hallelujah. You receive by faith. That's how to receive. Hayadaba kol shotela namahasa. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. One of the things about receiving is that you build a monument out of a moment. Yeah. And that's why our patriarchs and matriarchs, when they had an encounter with the Lord, they would actually build an altar in that place. And they will come to know a name of God on the basis of that experience. Is that correct? So one of the ways we'll build a monument from this moment to remind ourselves is maybe to have a hashtag, 10 years, 1 billion. I say receive it. Ten years. I can't even hear you. Give it the threshing house energy. Ten years. One billion. Thank you, Lord. God gave me three specific gifts. Hmm, no. God shared with me three gifts that he's giving to Threshing House that will become distinct parts of your operational model in the coming days. The first is that he said he is assigning local assemblies and ministries going on from now who will be stirred to devote a portion of their resources to the mission of God in Threshing House. Are you receiving that word? Glory to Jesus Christ. Can you honor the media? Can you honor the media? Can, can you celebrate God for them? That was fast. The way it's supposed to be. Yes. He said he will stir the hearts of his sons and daughters in local assemblies and ministries who will be stirred continually to dedicate a portion of their resources, almost like they have threshing house in their missional budget year on year. Amen and amen. And I didn't wait for God to even say, daughter, be a part. I, I covenanted. I said, hey, this is what you are doing. I'm inside. I'm inside. So going forward under God by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every year, Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance sets aside and mobilizes a, an excellent sum to Threshing House Ecclesia Outreach. Year on year, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to enter what God is doing very quickly because it's going to get widespread. The second thing he showed me he said he will operate a global outreach approach for this global missionary work through an uncommon strategy of raising disciples who are going to be representatives of the work in every nation of the world. Now, this is where it got interesting. He said some will be sons and daughters of the house, he said there will be others that he will raise for the house who will reach out to his, sons and, uh, his son and daughter by themselves. Did you catch that? There will be sons and daughters of the house who will be deployed to other nations and who will carry a burden of the house and go and be an extension of threshing house. Imagine a son of the house calling Pastor Mayo and saying, Father, would you come over this year? Give us a good month this year. We're in Finland, and we must have an outreach in Finland. Rejoice! Like you mean business! Like you mean business! Rejoice! Yes! 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 And there will be...
will be those that will reach you across social media through their own spiritual fathers and partners who would say, do you know the money is? I've been restless about a need to support the work and to bring an expression of the assignment to France. How do we partner? How do we make it work? Yes, I saw that very vividly, very vividly. The third dimension that I saw before I share just one of what I saw for both of you and then we'll take the rest offline. But the third dimension I saw for the ministry, the Lord spoke to me very distinctly that Pastor Esther's books are going to be adopted as part of federal government curriculum this decade. Yes, I very vividly. And he said it is not news to her that it's a confirmation. Is this so? It's a confirmation. Can we receive and rejoice? Receive and rejoice. I said receive and rejoice. So there are parts of our books that will come together as chapters for sex education in primary school, sex education in secondary school, femininity and grooming in secondary school, leadership for young girls. Hey! Now that you have heard these things, I will give you a proper opportunity to receive and rejoice. Hallelujah. That's how to rejoice. That's how to rejoice. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Allah rest you. Allah rest you. Do you know compounded interest? You, you may not know it, but you say yes. Because, I mean, as a person of faith. Because, Kine Amanda Romayolo, you when we in school. <laughs> At times. Here and there, it can confuse him. Mm -mm. But that's the simplest analogy for the nature of the seizing of reward that the Omonis are coming into. Yeah. It's compounded reward. Yeah. Do you see what I mean here? Oh, one more. Oh, Rebelando covers satire. That's what I see in the spirit. And I'm going to highlight three distinct dimensions that I see of that compounded reward. The first wasn't spoken to me. It was, uh, it, it was role played to me in the spirit. Right as I was in the car, I saw an image of both of them seated at the edge of a table. And I vividly saw a lot of fathers, of, and, uh, fathers and mothers of faith. I didn't even know that I was going to see Pastor Shegun, but he was there. And I didn't previously particularly understand their relationship. But he was there. I saw them sitting round a long table. And Pastor Mayo and Esther were at the, uh, at the head of the table. And the, the, what the Lord started to give me understanding about was the nature of very unusual access that he is giving them to weighty fathers and mothers in the body. Yes. Who will support, who will love, who will cover. And it's going to come, the gift will come with a lot of wisdom to be able to navigate those relationships. Yes. To be able to, in fact, I saw the image of a particular apostle who had called them out and declared words over them who stood as the ceremony sort of went on and began to proclaim words again over them, words of grace and honor. And it was very weighty. It was very, very weighty. Very weighty. I saw that. The second thing I saw, and I had to ask, okay, how do I, the things they're showing me for them, do I share them here? And he gave me what to share. So I clearly asked what I should share. 
Huh? And he said, say this before the congregation of saints as witnesses to what I will do. Second thing he's, he showed me, he said that they have manifested like rehearsal what is true to their destiny in God. And the name that he gave me for Pastor Esther is Iyaolomo Jojo. I'm telling you, that's what I heard. So he was saying to me that this passion and this burning of birthing sons and daughters into the faith is at the heart of their destiny. It's not only spiritual, it's biological, it's educational, it's political. Amen and amen. Baba Atiya. Glory to Jesus Christ. The third dimension concerning this compounded reward is abundance. I saw abundance. He said to me that Pastor Mayowa has sown seeds that has caught heaven's attention. We're getting ready to observe with our eyes a seizing of reward. If you see people parking cars and saying, this SUV, God put it in my heart. Please don't ask any questions. Since you didn't ask questions when they were sowing the seeds. Is that on a period? Amen. One sister in the choir was just like, Eje Kaolio, shouting so on period, he's on period. No arguments. I saw abundance. I saw abundance. Your father is the owner of cattle on a thousand hills. Your father is the owner of cattle on a thousand hills. And is causing this glory of the latter house to be greater than that of the former. Can we just stretch our hands to these gifts and proclaim in agreement that these words of the Lord, these promises of Yahweh, this favor, this kindness of the living God, it must speak. It's 10 years in ministry, 10 years in marriage, a decade of destiny. In, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Interestingly, I didn't come here to preach. I didn't come here to have any preaching session. I just came here to speak the word of the Lord. The Lord says, create. He that commanded light to shine out of the darkness. He said, in the last days, scoffers shall come, saying, the Lord is the Lord slack concerning his promise. He said, but this they did not know, that, they, that by the same word, the earth standing out of water and inside water, is upheld by that same word. Every good thing God has spoken to you in the dark. Every good thing God has spoken to you in the secret. Say, he's the one that heareth in secret and rewarded openly. Every service you have done in, in, in private, in private glare that nobody has seen. Labors and sacrifices that nobody knows anything about. The God who justifies the righteous. The God who justifies the silent labors of his servant. He brings you into a season when he brings it out. He begins to display his rewards for your life. But that, that is even a small thing. What I hear God saying is standing in the valley of every dry bone that you find around yourself begin to use your mouth to create the bible says in genesis chapter 1 and the heart was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep 
and the spirit was moving upon the face of the waters. Everything was bad. But the atmosphere to build everything was now in place. All they needed to start doing was God needed to be saying. I want everybody under the sound of my voice to stretch forth your hands to these people. Anything you say under God, right now, it will happen to them in righteousness. I want you to begin to open your mouth and begin to say I'm not just talking about praying in the spirit. I'm saying begin to speak what we happen. Say, my and Esther, your prosperity will become obvious. The, 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 the facility that got the, the campground, the Hebron village will be built. Even out of obscurity, it will come to limelight. Your, your, your name will begin to catch the attention of the public. People begin, kings and wise men, begin to travel to locate your oil, to pump it, and to take it into greater places. Platforms begin to come to you. You too begin to become a voice. We have seen men rise. They don't rise because they are doing plenty of activities. They rise because they obtain mercy. They rise because it is time. They rise is because they rise because God pulled them up. God pulls you up. You begin to see the pulling up. God, you don't need to do more things. It's just God bringing it out. We bring you into that season where God brings you also. You have seen people that you think that you're probably laboring even more than, and you have seen them in the limelight, and you are wondering, oh God, what is, what is this? Your own time. Just said, as the Lord has declared. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Choir, would you just do, God bless you, and let's sing it over them. Yes. Make your face shine yes, over Lord. you, and bring grace yes. to you. God, God, you face us, you. God bless you, say, God bless you, and keep you in the face, make this face shine, so be gracious.
Lord praise as you take your seat today. Do it well. Give the Lord some good praise. Hallelujah. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. Congratulations to my dearly beloved brother, Pastor Maiwa, and my sweetheart sister, Pastor Esther Moni. I love you so much. And I'm just so, I'm just so joyed. You've made me cry. So be using that tissue because you started this thing. Be, be, you started it. Amen and amen. Uh, thanks be to the Lord. How many of you had such a great time when uh, Pastor Deji Kurumi was teaching the word? That's my pastor. You see, I'm, am I not a well-nourished believer? Yes, yes, yes. It's been a great day already. I was plugged in online. Uh, while I was heading from a different ministration, and I just felt like there was a richness of the different parts of God coming to us, you know, at the anniversary. And I'm just going to lean into uh, that same posture. Uh, my real work is done. Every extra minute that I have here is just a gift because I have done exactly what the Lord really put in my heart to do today. Um, and I, I just really extend my congratulations to my siblings. I'm just so thankful um, for what the Lord has done. And I'm eager to see what he'll do in the decade. How many of you are eager to see what he'll do in the decade? Ten years. Ten years. Ah, glory to Jesus. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Mighty things the Lord will do. Mighty, mighty things the Lord will do, and we will be co-laborers and partners of all that is in the Lord's heart, in the name of Jesus Christ. I also thank all the stewards, the volunteers, the partners, the givers, the intercessors, the leaders. The Lord will honor your seed sown and increase your righteous harvest. Ah, the Lord will honor your seed sown and increase your righteous harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who have served, who have gone on to other countries, gotten married, moved on to new seasons, they will still be part of the reward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for all that is yet to come, we'll keep our hearts aligned to the Lord. We want nothing other than his will to be done. There's no other aspiration. There's no other desire. There's nothing that we are aspiring to other, other than to become more like Jesus Christ. And to see the fulfillment of his will in the nations of the earth. And in the name of Jesus, this will be a reality in Jesus' name. I also thank God for every ministry gift, a daddy and mommy, a mentors, and friends, family, everyone who is sharing this moment with us, those who are streaming online. I pray that God's blessings pour out much more over us in Jesus' name. I will put a word that the Lord has given to me for you in your heart and in your hands today in the next few minutes and it's just one single highlight so many great things God has taught us today and I still believe that there might be more light he will still shine in our hearts before we leave but there is a there's an addition that I believe he has caused me to be a part of this conference for and that is what I will highlight to you today I will be reading from the passion translation of Hebrews chapter 12 this is a scripture that is dearly beloved to me, and I have actually prayed with it for years. I have been a product of that scripture. Um, I think it's a really powerful one. You know it, you love it. In NKJV, you'll read something like, therefore, saying that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that not so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and the cross, he suffered the shame and is now set at the right hand side of God in glory. He said, consider him who endured such contradictions from sinners, lest ye be weary and faint in your hearts or in your souls. Amen and amen. How many of you love that scripture? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's one of my favorite definitions of Jesus Christ. But he's second to my ultimate favorite. 
He's the go-between. He's the mediator. He's the in-between. He's the toaster. Between our lavid. You are hearing this thing about Jesus and I'm still frowning. I don't... I, I'm saying, Alari, you're still like, yeah, so. Ah! Is it hunger? You don't know why the word is the bread of life? Because it satisfies. But it can't satisfy you if you don't come hungry. So there's a posture. You lean forward, you be like, hey, bora, bakuva, hande. If it's another song now, I know how people be doing their head. I don't want to sing some songs. And I'm saying, Alari, no, you are looking at me straight. Alari, no. He's the mediator of the new covenant. A super deva shatada. I love this one too. The author and the finisher of our faith. In him we'll find everything we need. No wonder scripture says that all things that pertain to life and godliness has been given to us. Everything we require says we've been blessed with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Powerful scripture. He said, lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset you. And this is a conversation about holiness, a conversation about consecration, but it's also a conversation about being fit for purpose. It's a conversation about being fit for purpose. As I prayed and meditated about this meeting, God gave me a, a full blueprint about this message. But then he overrode the message with a prophetic assignment. So he was like, don't worry about preaching for long. Do this thing for me when you get there. And that's what we've done. But I, I know that in the next few minutes, there's a light that will done that will be a contribution to what Jesus is doing here today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because about prayers in Queen's small chops, the energy will rise in this atmosphere. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Look at that. That's a powerful scripture. It's about being fit for purpose. Why does this matter? Whether it's about your spirituality, serving in ministry, being a, a godly wife to your husband, being a covering as a, uh, as a husband to your wife, you know, raising your children and discipling them in Christ Jesus, running your business, you know, whatever God is calling you to do, there is a manner of person you must be to be able to fulfill your destiny in Christ Jesus. Do you understand this? There's a manner of man you must be. There's a caliber of spirit that is required. While he is still young, he's not different from a slave. He can't lay hold.
Clinton. This is what I'll be sharing with you. If I chose to sit into the conversation around kingdom entrepreneurship and how to build a multi-million dollar corporation in the course of this decade, as I said on the continent, this is what I'll be sharing to you. It's the word of the Lord for us today that he's put in my heart. But I want to show you in TPT. You will get it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the moment it dawns on your heart, you will run with it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Look at it in TPT. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses or Matthias who encircle us or they clothe us like clouds. They encircle us like clouds. They are with us. They encircle us. This is profound. And it's a whole different message. That no be only me waka come. If you see me in any context, I'm aware of a prophetic cloud. Amen and amen. amen. When I stand in my public policy work, I know that Deborah is urging me on. I know that Joseph is on. My patriarchs and matriarchs, I reckon with my heritage and I keep it before my eyes. We have a cloud of patriarchs and matriarchs who have gone ahead of us, whose mantles we now wear. Actually, it's the mantle of Christ, but they have participated, they have utilized it before it was passed down. Some of the things you are walking into today, the initial occupants of that office, they are now in the gallons. They're like, carry on, whoa, 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 see that guy. You get, you are worshiping. David is just like, I will dexterity out. And the pit from which you were dug, we came out of somewhere. There, there are spiritual tribes in the spirit. How many of you can connect with scriptural prototypes? You'll find some character of scripture and you'll be like, eh, this is not my realm, this is not my realm. Yes. You know, whenever I'm asked, how are you this confident? I didn't go to confidence school. Deborah ni mogbe wo mi ni wa yi baruku mena villa hash who is their daddy e boropi give e riku do you know what Deborah was interacting with a woman in an extremely patriarchal society where women were meant to only be seen and not heard and she was adjudicating between nations called barak a military infrastructure of the day and said has god not said Barak said, I can't go. Said, she said, I will go with you. So I come in that order. Then you say, uh, women. This is not women empowerment. This is a mantle. I don't, even me, I don't perceive myself as a woman. Forget makeup and fascinator. A mini me in the spirit. What, what, what? I, even me, I know his agenda knows no gender. Hello, Koba Ziva Hande. Amen and amen. So, you, does that happen to you? You see some patriarchs, you'll be like, yeah, this is my dimension. You are not the only one who is reading them. They are reading you. It's true. It's true. We're not fabricating this thing. Scripture says so. We're surrounded. They, they, they clothe us like a cloud. Ah. A whole different conversation, right? But this is where the Lord asked me to keep our eyes. He said, seeing that we have all these great witnesses of patriarchs and matrix who encircle us like clouds, we must let go of every wound that has pierced us. Ah. Look at this closely. We must let go of every wound that has pierced us. I love it. It's here. And the sin we so easily fall into. I'm going to show you uh, in the study version of TPT how it breaks down that uh, segment, the wound that has pierced us. He said, to get rid of every arrow tip in us. The implication is carrying an arrow tip inside. 
a wound that weighs us down and keeps us from running our race with freedom. You know arrows and their tips. You know how arrows can be thrown, targeted at a person. Imagine the tip of that arrow entering and staying. So it's stinging. And those entry points of, of the arrow tips continue to create fresh wounds. The problem is not merely that it is a wound, it becomes the source of subsequent wounds. Many of us are hurting. Many of us are hurting. Many of us are limping. Many of us are deeply, deeply saddened by the actions and inactions of those in whom we repose trust. And we don't talk about it enough. So we can talk about a kingdom marriage and we can talk about the requirements of submission for a woman. But I've counseled, you know, Pastor Esther to hear women say to me in different ways, but the sum of what they are saying is, you are asking of submission from me. How about love and leadership from him? Like, how can we have a balanced conversation about this matter? How do I continue to be such a giver in this marriage relationship, and it's unreciprocated, you see. And I've had men who say to me, you're talking about provision and leadership, but I know that my wife gossips about me in her family WhatsApp group. These are acts of dishonor. They're very severe, but they exist. By the way, can I even tell you that one of the litmus tests of your spirituality is how you are when you are relaxed with your family members. Many of us would preach in a conference, then you go and visit your parents in Shaki, then you sit on the floor and you start to talk about the same people you've been talking about since you were four years old. Ah, Uncle Femi, Badun, the mom is all running by but just six years old. Tani go for one ten naira, tan for one ten naira. We asked him to give us ten naira. Am I saying the truth? We we actually undress ourselves from our convictions. We hang it at the door. Enter into the home, begin to rehash painful memories that keep families bound in generational patterns. So you wonder why your overnight intercession is not speaking over your home. Because if what you pray does not align to what you say, heaven cannot respond to earth. So we'll pray, but we'll come back and we'll do the same thing. Marriage, you know, people pray, people receive this word from the Lord, but they can't, they can't effectively navigate conflict. Husband and wife can't sit and say, this thing hurt me. And the other one says, I'm sorry, I didn't see it that way. You know, we talk unkindly to one another and about one another. And the church has to change. One of the greatest sources of soul wounds is actually church in the form of a local assembly or a ministry. Yeah. You come to worship Jesus, but you receive backlashes. You are too much, too strong. A person is worshiping Jesus in songs. There are people at the back who are saying, Why are you crying? Yes. You can see it in their eyes that they think you are too much. Selah. Selah. And you know, be doing little by little. <laughs> but you understand me there are hurts but while Jesus is fixing his body can we talk about you fixing your heart yeah. can you take care of the person that you are on the inside let me tell you the unsafe thing that I find infiltrating the church and it's a canal culture of the world it's a culture of pseudo success that prefers appearance over evidence. I would explain it to you. I coach, people pay me to coach them. I'm a counselor, I'm a consultant as well. I go into businesses and help them make decisions. And I meet, and it's just a rare privilege of my placement in the body, you know, uh, and it's just an act of the Lord's mercy and choice over me. But I do meet a lot of uh, senior leaders, decision makers, voices, very admired people who have Nicodemus encounters with me. 
who when they sit with me by night in coded places, what they are saying about their great woes and deep struggles do not align in any way to the image that is online. You see? Now that, that does not in any way hinder my ability to serve him. But it gives me perspective to teach God's people to keep their eyes on the goalpost, which is Christ. Many times, your hashtag goals is under. They're deeply struggling. You see this? So, there is a way the world loves appearance. There are people who prefer to appear successful than to be actually successful. Yes. Yes. They are working so hard to look successful, wealthy, influential, but they don't have their lives together. There's so much chaos in people's personal lives and marriages. Marriages that are hanging on the last thread of divine mercy. But after another photo shoot, you are dissatisfied with your own marriage. Your marriage that on God's scorecard, it was 68.2%. And it's like, go on, daughter, beloved, you are doing it. Well done. I know it's not easy. Keep up. And you're growing. Your love is going deeper. You're praying together. You're catching a vision for, for the kingdom. You're, you're investing in your children. You live in a smaller home. Not a smaller home. A smaller house. In the back end of somewhere. But on heaven's attendance. Day on day, week on week, you are meeting with your children consistently discipling them in the gospel. Heaven is rejoicing over you and taking it and saying a reward is coming. Omolomoyi, this is a daughter in whom I'm well pleased. This is a son in whom I'm well pleased. You take your eyes off these things that are weighty. You are stressed because you had your own children at local government maternity center and your friend has just returned from Houston. So her daughter has a U.S. passport. Ah! Say I will not be foolish. To be carnally minded is. Stay. Stay in that neighborhood. I call mainland. Island. Because island is where things are moving. Stay. Stay. First, stay. Stay. Honor the Lord. But they've done another photo shoot. Big pop off shoulder and fitted suit. You've lost decorum. You are just having attitude all around the house. You and your husband prayed in the morning. You gisted, discussed the future. You're already upset. He's like, ah, the guy will be trying to trace it, permutating like in the last 48 hours. What happened? What did I do? It's nothing about him. It's the, it's the hashtag couple goals that you saw. These things, they wound our souls. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Personally, my parents got their parenting right. They got it right. My parents got it right. They raised me well. I'm, I'm so thankful to God for them. And my commitment and my gift back to them, and I, I made this determination when I was 30. I said, my parents raised me in a way that I didn't acquire trauma. In my adult life, I would not acquire it. When they had responsibility over me, they raised me in a way that preserved me from the afflictions of the world. Do you understand this? So as an adult, when I can now make holy decisions under God, I won't acquire it. There are 33-year-old women today who will drive their, their Toyota Corolla to the house of a friend that disrespects them. They will sit in that house and borrow shoes and earrings because they don't feel enough. And those ones will tell other people who tell other people who discredit them and the call of God on their lives. Whereas the four pieces of earrings you had, you could have been reusing it till the Lord visits you with more. As basic as this example is, almost so pedestrian for some people that they're like, does that happen? It happens. And I'm not asking you to hear me I am asking you to interpret in your own language. Because you may not be driving Toyota to borrow earrings. 
but you are oversharing with your head of department in church. And three years down the line, you will say they are preaching about you. Because you don't have boundaries. Stop acquiring wounds. It delays the journey of destiny. It does. It does. Drama and trauma delays destiny. But this is the word of the Lord to us. Whatever has happened, he said it is time to let go of every wound. That's the word of the Lord to us today. You're responsible to be fit for destiny. If there's a part of your life that hurts, if there's a part of your life where your sense of identity is distorted, if there's a part of your life where you never feel good enough, if there's a part of your life where the words that have been spoken by authorities became, you know, your undoing, where mentors became tormentors. Selah. 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 You know, it's often spirits that causes this thing. In fact, it is through mentorship. Mentorship, the pursuit of mentorship, has become the number one source of trauma in the body of Christ today. I'm telling you. There were things that it was Jesus' business to directly disciple you into. But you were not assured in your relationship with him. So you were in everybody's DM till you were perceived as a nuisance. It never needed to have happened. You do, you, do you understand in Jesus' name? You were watching TV because there was no light. You went to your neighbor's house. You should never have been there. Ab initio. The day they now call daddy by his first name. Where I came one call, you are, you are shocked. You, are, you, you, you acquired it. You facilitated it. There's a way to be. Paul said, I magnify my office. There's a way to carry yourself and organize your life so you can stay fit for destiny. As I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and he says, there's nobody anywhere in the world today that can come and say, uh, Didike and I were gossiping about you. There's the, the person doesn't exist because it doesn't happen. That will come out and say, ah, you, I, I need to gist you. So Didike and I were speaking and she said this about you. It's not because gist is not sweet. It's because there's a way to be if you want to be fit for destiny. If you don't want to be undistracted for destiny. You are too serious. You are too serious. I come out every, every time is ministry. My sister, every time is ministry. Oh, Nibawa Labo. Every time is ministry. Don't worry. Leave it like that. Every time. Let me be following my Jesus. Praying under my breath. Leave it like that. He said, let go of every wound that has pierced you. And don't acquire new wounds. As we go forward from this conference, this is the conclusion of the matter. Ensure that your spirituality impacts on your character. And in the places where your heart has been deeply hurt, refuse for your hurts to become offense. Refuse for your hurts to become bitterness. Because no matter what anybody has done, what truly matters at the end of the day is who you become on the account of what happened. Some become bitter on the account of what happened. Some become better on the account of what happened. The choice is yours. I pray that the blessings of Jesus be over this house. Pray that your eyes will see, your ears will hear, and your heart will understand. I pray that in the places where there have been pain, there will be purpose. I pray in the places where there have been identity distortions, there will be a reclamation of hope and a new understanding of who we are. I pray that our walk with the Lord will do a work in our character and will mature in the things of the Spirit in a way that honors Yahweh and makes us a godly example of the faith everywhere we go. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Alleluia. Let's have our seat. And just that, that moment of prayer, can you just close your eyes? Um, this investment is not in vain. That I want you to just take one minute. No need to rush out. We are rounding up now. I will take our test giving, but in this moment, can you just um, soak it in? Can you just soak it in? Just soak it in in 30 seconds. Soak it in. Pray under your breath. And just soak it in. The investment of God for all these hours that we have been waiting on him. The investment of God over these hours. Some of us have been here since 6.30 a.m. And words have been coming over and over. Can you soak it in 30 seconds? Don't rush out. Don't rush out. Don't rush out. 30 seconds, just soak it in. And if you are there, you want to start a relationship with Jesus. You want to start a relationship with you. You've heard some of those things that Pastor DDK was saying the other time. And you know the power to do it is the power of, of being a child of God. And you would like to start that relationship with him. Just quietly where you are, just put your hand on your heart. We don't have time to call you out on anything. But please make a solid decision for Jesus. I'm waiting if there's anybody like that. And you want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you. It's like you, Lord, in all the earth. Righteous, Lord, and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Jesus, Jesus, you are the God that will try to drive. Oh, it's like you, Lord. It's like you alone in all we My chest, Lord, my chest, love and beauty and this world. Oh, nothing, nothing. Matter the odds that you are feeling your heart go jack back, baby. Oh, Lord, it's
Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for anyone here that is making a decision for you. And I pray for anyone that is saying, I've heard so much words. These hours that we spend together, I'm going to take action. I'm going to take action. I'm going to take action. I'm going to take needed action for my life to be transformed. Holy Spirit of God, these words that have been planted on their spirits shall bear fruit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Can you jam your hands together for Jesus? Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate the leadership of this church, uh, led by Pastor Ayo Daniels. Can we, can we clap for them? And everybody working with them. Thank you for having us here. This is our second time of viewing this place. And uh, we enjoy very good support from the church. And we are very grateful. And they've joyfully extended our stay to 5 p.m. So what you want to do, I know you are looking at your time. Your tummy is saying, pam, pam, pam. But if you have ever been grateful on our behalf, that say, thank you, Jesus, for what you have. We are here to dance. For the last 30 minutes of this, of this we are going to dance. But before we do that, uh, because this is our anniversary celebrations, and uh, I know our daddy has prayed, everybody has prayed, but I want to say something that I said to the team members alone at the beginning of the year. But I just felt led in my spirit that I should, and team members also listen to me, if you did not take it serious at the time. I said that we are going to pray every day this year. Prophets, prophets, prophetic words will always need prophetic actions. So I'm asking you that you are going to join, want to join us and just pray. Just pray along with us. For this whole one year, at the, at the first year of Treasure House, we prayed for one year. And we felt, let God, we felt let that God is calling us back to that place. And we are going to do that for one year. So if you'd like to join, we are already in third month, right? So if you'd like to join us, please note that. Hallelujah. All right. Um, I want all members of Treasure House, if you would like to join us as well, before you go, um, please just get to the registration stand. If you'd like to be a partner, as well with Treasure House, please partner with us. You can raise up your hand. The partnership form will be given to you. And if you are following us online or you are watching this later, we invite you to partner with us in what God is doing. One billion souls in 10 years. How many are excited? How many of us are excited? You know what, you know what it means? Like GDK, we always say, I love my access is your access. So everything that God has said concerning us, given to us, I has given to you. So I can't be in, I can't be in ten countries. It means that you are going there. Hallelujah. So are we excited? Are we excited? Are we ready? Are we ready? All right. So all team members, board of trustees, leaders, please let's just come here and let's just. We are going to. Everybody come. We are, we are not dancing yet. We want, we are inviting Pastor Mui Wolufemi. Uh, in fact, when we are, the last time we were having a partner's lodge, he was the one that prayed with us as well. So we are so delighted to have him here. Please, if you are uh, our guest, just take us. It's just five minutes, and then we'll be done. Is that okay? God bless you in the name of Jesus. Daddy. If you are a volunteer, a partner, whatever category, and if you'd like to join us, if you are outside, please let me call them. Pause everything you are doing now. Put Maybe you can put one person there. Or kneel down where you are. If you can't leave your place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, before we pray. I'll just read the scripture. Read my spirit. With us from Hebrews chapter 6, from verse 7, I'm reading from the TPT version. So, for men's hearts are, like, are just like the soil that drinks up the showers, which often fall on it. Some soil will yield crops as God's blessing upon the field. But if the feed continues to produce only tons and tissues, it costs hands 
over it, and it will be born. Verse 9 says, Having said that, beloved, we are fully convinced that there are more beautiful and excellent things which flow from your salvation. For God, the faithful one, is not on fear. How can he forget the work you have done for him? He remembers the love you demonstrate as you continually serve his beloved ones for the glory of his name. Verse 11 says, But we long to see you passionately advance until the end and you find your hope fulfilled. So don't allow your hearts to grow dull or lose your enthusiasm. But follow the example of those who fully received what God has promised because of their strong faith and patient endurance. Father, we thank you for the life of your sons and your daughters that you have called into your service. Thank you for the grace for faithfulness this far. Thank you for 10 years of labor that is meaningful. Lord, we thank you for this journey that has produced fruit for the reward of every meaningful dream and journey is fruitfulness. Thank you for the joy of laboring and thank you for the joy of the harvest that we have seen. Lord, I pray for these ones, for the next 10 years that they are entering into, is a new beginning of greater harvest. In the name of Jesus, I ask that their passion for the service will not wane. In the name of Jesus, I, on their behalf, embrace grace for greater efforts deployed for the kingdom and the expansion of the work in their hands. In the name of Jesus, I pray that these ones will passionately advance. They will not lose the fire. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray every prophecy that have gone ahead of them, Lord, I pray for grace to war with it and to make these prophecies come to reality. In the name of Jesus, I pray that their hearts will not grow dull. They will not lose their enthusiasm. You will not lose your fire. In the name of Jesus, your hearts will not grow dull. You will not lose your enthusiasm. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your iron will sharpen one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron as a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. May your axe never grow dull. In the name of Jesus, I see ahead of you new lands to cover. I pray, may you not lose your focus. May you not be distracted. In the name of Jesus, every word that have gone ahead of you, they will produce. They will become flesh. In the name of Jesus, I pray that light will shine upon every word that have gone ahead of you. In the name of Jesus, your faith will endure. Your faith will endure. In the name of Jesus. And I pray none of you will lose your reward. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, I pronounce that the next 10 years will be years of greater fruitfulness. To be year of greater impact. It will be year of greater exploits. It will be year of knowing. Knowing God deeper and wider and higher. In the name of Jesus, your light will shine brighter. I decree that your light will shine with greater intensity. In the name of Jesus, nations of the earth will come to know you. I pray for a cross-border impact. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. 
when others ask you, why are you doing this? You will know that there is, you will declare to them there is no other life. For I see God at work, and that which he has said and spoken to me in the secret, I've seen the repeated, perform, the repeated performance of it in the open. Therefore, I have no other life. For God will perform that which he speaks concerning you. You will testify. Thank you, Father. Threshing out ecclesiastical outreach. I pray for you that you will grow stronger. You will grow wider. You will grow taller. You will grow deeper. And Lord, I pray that the root of this ministry will never lack fresh waters. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. It shall be years of addition. It shall be years of more and more. The Lord will increase this ministry more and more in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you in Jesus' mighty and much less name we pray. We celebrate Jesus. Please, all the Untreshing House members, if, um, don't go back. Uh, but if you have all the staff of Treasure House, that the election, please just come. I want you to, if you, are, you know yourself, staff of Treasure House, just come. We are dancing. Don't go back. Don't go back. We are from here. He's dancing. Staff, staff, trashers, come up here with me. Um, no, quickly, quickly, quickly. I want Daddy Alessian to pray for them. Now, these are the people that that's, I know everybody is serving. Everybody is serving, but then they are they are standing with us. Some of them are full time in ministry, and as a pastor, I also want you to just bless them and pray for them. Our guest ministerial, please just get ready. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. In the work of the ministry, you will not expire. The oil of grace will continually be upon you in Jesus' name. In this work, you will not expire. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can we clap for Jesus? Do we need to start the song for you? Or you are ready? All right, let's rise up on our feet and just give God praise. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus. It's 10 years of God's faithfulness. Are you sure we are ready? We will do it in the normal church way house. Hallelujah. Nothing you can 